Hey everybody, welcome to the live stream. A little bit of a different show today. We're going to talk about um, low-tech aquariums. That's, you know, it's a topic that you'll see come up. You'll see people say, I run a low-tech, maybe plant a tank. But I think in general, low technology usage is going to be good for so many hobbyists. I watch a lot of people fall behind in their care for their animals basically because of technology when we strike out to buy technology to make it easier uh so first what is low technology or low tech right uh I'll, an example would be perhaps you buy a big canister filter right and it's got bells and whistles and maybe it's got a built-in heater and maybe it's got a pre-filter and maybe like uh the fluval g7 also read uh, total dissolves, dissolves solid, it also tracked flow, it did lots of stuff, right? So that would be an example of using lots of technology. And on the other end of that, maybe we're using something simple like a sponge filter where uh, there's no moving parts, we use an air pump to inject some air, and then we move water, and bacteria lives there. So that'd be like kind of the two extremes there, but it goes a lot further than that, and uh, I'll tell some stories towards the end, I guess, uh, about people taking technology way too far. Uh, and you would think like, sure, yeah, it's low tech with, with filters, right? But people do it with lighting, they do it with all kinds of stuff. And so, yeah. So why do I think technology is holding most people back? Because they're spending time learning the technology instead of learning their animals, right? And so, we see this probably in a lot of hobbies. I'm seeing it in my life right now, right? Uh, we have, you know, we bought like a dog carriage for our, to carry our dogs around because when we go for too long of a walk, they get tired. Well, you know, there's been times where we're like, yeah, we got to put that together so we can go do it. And then by the time we get distracted, we end up not doing the walk at all. So most times we don't even put that thing together to go on a walk. It's still in the box, even though it's from Christmas. And uh, that's, you know, that's an example of that and a good example with like a planet tank and you can you can take this over to uh reptiles you can take it over to salt water co2 regulators injecting co2 injecting co2 to speed up plants most people can't wrap their heads around it they they're coming in from a perspective of someone told me adding co2 makes plants better that's kind of where that comes from that's like having your car going, well, someone said if I put a, you know, an air intake kit, I get more horsepower. And so you do it, but you don't really understand it. And you're kind of just, hmm, like, okay, I guess it's better, right? But the worst problem is you could have someone install that air filter in your car, right? You got your K&N air filter, you paid someone to install it, even though you could have installed it yourself, you know, or that cold air intake. The same thing happens with the aquarium with the CO2 regulator and injection the problem is you don't pay anybody to do it you do it and so now you're trying to find well, which part do i buy you might spend hours researching which regulator are you going to buy then you got to research what size tank am i going to use right and then you research okay well, what kind of diffuser am i going to do right you know you so and then you're like oh what about check valves do i do a normal air valve do i need a stainless steel one the tubing do I have to use CO2 grade tubing? You've got all these questions and you got to find out all the answers before you can even start putting it together. So now you have all the objects, right? And you had to spend all the time and money to do this. You start putting it together and usually you run into your first problem where you didn't realize that you ne needed to let the tank become room temperature because metal will contract and expand based on temperature. So you went and you bought one from Central Welding. You got your CO2 tank. You're bringing it in. It's covered in rain. I just did this the other day. That's how I know. Uh, it's covered in rain. And I, having been down this road, let it sit overnight. Now it's at room temperature. But if you don't do that and you go and you put your regulator on, you crank that sucker on there with the biggest wrench you can find. And sometimes you got to go buy a big crescent wrench from a local store. You get it going, you're adjusting the CO2, you're playing with that needle valve, you're watching the bubble counter, 
you put water in there when you really should have put mineral oil in there because as you put CO2 through, it's going to evaporate the water and, uh, you know, then you'll have an empty bubble counter, but that's besides the point. You'll get that thing going. Then the next day you'll come in and you'll be like, oh my gosh, it doesn't work. And you're out of CO2. What? How is it loose? Because it expanded or contracted. That's how. So then you run into problems. You can run into problems where, uh, you know, there's too much CO2, not enough CO2. You start worrying about, oh my gosh, if I put too much CO2 in there, there won't be enough oxygen. Oh, I better change it because right now the the very expensive uh, filter you bought, the canister filter, is splashing too much. It's going to get rid of all my CO2. And so you end up changing all these things. And then you might watch fish struggle or even uh, die from something like that. Because uh, you're, you're chasing after this big technological thing when in general nature will kind of just get us there anyway. So plants most often will grow without a bunch of fancy equipment. Now, there's some that are harder than others, but I've seen people that are really in tune with nature or really in tune with their aquarium be able to do things that that plant requires CO2 injection. It requires high light. Um, and so my sales pitch, well, actually I'm not selling anything, but my, my plea to you would be if we had taken the time to you know, research the CO2 system or the big filter or the light or whatever it is. And we pour that back into the animals. And when I'm saying animals, I'm talking about the fish. I'm talking about the inverts. I'm talking about the bacteria. I'm talking about the plants. If you were to learn more about the plant, I'll watch people agonize over which heater to buy, which filter to buy, which whatever light to buy, all of that. And then I could be like, hey, what country does that plant come from? Oh, I don't know. What pH? Yeah, I don't know either. Like they don't know so much about the plant or the fish itself, but they're, you know, they might spend three hours learning about, you know, a filter because it's got lots of video and it's flashy and it's all, oh, this thing does, you know, it's got a, a Wisley Janger and it uh, does it 20x the other one. Oh, well, there we go. I didn't know I needed one of those, but I got 20x of it now, right? And so I love to observe nature. I do it every day. I've got a pond to do it. I've got aquariums to do it. That's why I set up aquariums. I set up little ecosystems and then watch what happens, even when it's bad. Oh, no, that fish is fighting. Oh, no, algae is happening. Oh, no, I've got blue-green algae. What's going on there? Ooh, I got scum on top of the water. I want to figure all of that out and not always just go straight to a piece of equipment to make things harder. Now, there are hobbyists, and I've been down this road, and, and saltwater leans a lot into this as well, where the equipment is the fun part, right? You know, getting that controller to control the pH probes. And, you know, I didn't even mention pH probes when it comes to CO2. It's a lot of people will hook up their CO2 tanks and regulators into a pH monitor. Like that's another layer of complexity to get some uh, CO2 to your plants that most people aren't even sure if they needed it to begin with. They Because people go, what I find funny about CO2, and, and this is turning into just a hate on CO2, which we're going to launch a CO2 regulator, so I obviously don't hate them, but uh, people will buy a CO2 system without ever having a way to measure how much CO2 was in their system to begin with. Like, that doesn't make sense. Let me buy more. I have no idea how much I have, but I definitely need more, right? And that's not the case. I mean, we can see local waterways and things where you can watch plants pearl. I watch it in aquariums without CO2 all the time where there's so much oxygen in the water from the plants releasing it and using up so much CO2 that I'm getting the same effect as if I was injecting CO2, Right? But maybe in a big aquarium, you've got you've got a bunch of plants that are using up all the CO2, and then maybe you do need to supplement it. There's so many ways to do that. But don't forget about the animals in there, the fish, the bacteria. I'm going to pivot a little way away from CO2 because if you're not into CO2, like, oof, this is just getting too nerdy. 
But let's look at uh, filtration and water pumps and things like that and salt water or even fresh water. Maybe you're trying to make a river type setup. You'll have so many pumps going and it becomes each thing you add with electricity is another failure point, right? It's another stray volt of cur uh, uh, stray volt of current. It's another thing to plug in. It's another fire hazard. It's adding more heat to the aquarium. A lot of people don't realize that, that, you know, when you plug in a power head and if you use five watts, that's equivalent to a five watt heater running in there. If you hook up a canister filter, like a big old uh, FX6, like I've got two of them on my 800 gallon, right? And each one's consuming like 35 watts. Well, that's 70 watts. It's like I have a 70 watt heater going all the time. Now, it's not directly a one-to-one -one ratio, but it's pretty close because it's encapsulated and uh, the water's running right by it, especially in hang-on-back filters uh, where the, the pump's inside the tank or the power head. Those are pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio of adding heat. Lights, they're not exactly a one-to-one, -one, but when they're right on the top of your aquarium, that heat transfers down. That helps heat it up. So you've got all these things going on that the average hobbyist doesn't grasp. They don't know like, oh yeah, I should factor in. I've got all these heat sources before I'm factoring in how much of a heater do I want to put in, right? Because, or how many heaters? Like there's a lot of that too. How many heaters is someone running? Um, you know, because that more is merrier, more is better, more redundancy, all of those things, more pumps. If you have a wave maker in every corner, you know, you could just be having way too much going on, you know, as in water flow. That being said, there are definitely ways to utilize all of this stuff. And in general, we have a society that's been built over the last, you know, 50 years, basically, that is when you buy something new and you add it to your thing, it gets better, right? Or at least it won't get worse. So, uh... Therefore, we're encouraged to go, well, another air stone's not going to hurt. Another filter, another heater, another light, another this, another that. When the reality is, if you travel the world at all, and, and, and I'm, I'm not even saying <clears throat> go to Peru or something. I'm saying go to your local creek, your local lake, right? How many, la how much layer of just like fish poop and... Uh, trash and leaf debris and grass and a tree fell down, all these things that would absolutely be against the rules of keeping an aquarium is going on there. And you might say, well, they got way more water, right? Yes, that's true, but they also have way more waste and everything. But when you test that water, usually it's pretty good. Now, there are extremes like, oh, I, I dumped 100 gallons of oil in there and everything died. Sure right? But for the most part, nature will clean that up. Give it time. Nature will strip that oil out and the plants will do their job. And over time, things will repair. And that happens in our aquariums too. A lot of times we want to buy our way to success. And one of the ways to do that is buy more equipment, make it faster, make it easier, whatever, you know, whatever it is that we need. In life, usually you're needing, you know, you either need success or you need more time or you need more money or you need, there's always something you need in life. And so if you need more money, you're going to buy stuff. Maybe you buy our Brian Trump Hatcher and our Brian Trump eggs, your official breed, so you can sell them so you can make more money, right? Or maybe you need the success part of it. So you're, you're doing all of that kind of stuff to become a master breeder in your local club program. But the reality is all, almost everything I might even be able to say everything could be done in a vacuum uh, without using massive amounts of technology. It's been proven in the past with like Dr. Diana Wallstad and, and stuff like that, where, where aquariums were set up a long time and studies were run on them that basically weren't even, it was only using like window light, not even a light on the aquarium, uh, no filtration at all. And really where I think we need to go is a hobby and where you should go as a hobbyist is what things are truly adding value to your experience, right? Does that third car add experience to your two-person family? Not really. Like, it's nice to have. I got a backup. I, I got this extra van or truck I use every once in a while. 
But in your hobby right now, do you need that extra filter? And this is coming from a guy that drank all the Kool-Aid there was. I drank it all. Got into monster fish, got into African cichlids, got into breeding for profit, got into working at a store. I own a store. I own a warehouse full of tanks. I learned that you don't necessarily need all that stuff. There are times it warrants it, but not nearly as much as guys like me would be paying to advertise to you that you need more. You know, you if you've been around for a while, you've heard me say a lot, use what you have first. If you already have a hang-on back filter, just use that. Don't go buy a new one. Even if we were to launch one tomorrow, don't buy ours. Just use yours, right? Because it's not going to be that game-breaking different for most people, 99% of people. We have an auto feeder, for instance. Most of you don't necessarily need an auto feeder. Now, I am leaving next week for a couple of weeks, and I'm gonna, I need auto feeders, but most don't. Yeah, we can grow fish a little bit faster. Yes, you might go on vacation for a weekend. If it's only a weekend, nature will take care of it. It'll sort itself out. If it's only a week, nature will sort itself out. Now, if you have some ultra-aggressive fish, there could be a case for that. If you had fry in the tank and you didn't want them to get eaten, there's a case for that. But most of us... You know, I, I would wager most of the you know auto feeders we sell will be for people that it's, eh, I needed one, I didn't own one yet, and, and I'm going away for a couple of days. The reality is you didn't need it, and it might complicate your life. What if that thing falls in? Oh no, it killed all my fish, right? Uh, or mal malfunction, you set up and it, it's, it's uh, feeding too much, you know, like, oh, I didn't calibrate it enough. And then, you know, the time you spend on ordering one, and setting it up, calibrating it, make sure it's got the right pellets and all of that, right? Was probably better spent learning more about the inhabitants in there, learning more about that ecosystem. Maybe you would have realized like, oh, fish usually just chew on almost anything in the wild. Like look at that little bit of mulm. Oh, look, that tetra is feeding on snail poop. That snail's eating a decaying leaf. Like, they're not going to starve out in just a week. Now, if you have apex predators and there's no fish coming around and they might get so uppity that they're going to work on each other, right? There is always, there's always going to be cases where low tech doesn't make sense because of this parameter. That's how we get to, oh, that's an advanced thing, like keeping... My puffer fish. I have to pay or have someone feed them while I'm gone. I, it's it's too much work. Not that it can't be done, because I've seen it done. To f automatically feed frozen foods, it can be done, but it's much more simple to have a family member or someone local stop by, put a handful of clams in, and keep an eye on it. That's that's the approach I will take, because. I don't want to worry about, did this crazy thing I set up go wrong? Did the power flicker? And now the clams aren't keeping cold, and <clears throat> but then it fires and dumps them in, and they're rotten, right? So my, my big push for you guys, for everybody, is spend more time learning about nature, your animals, your plants, and the parts that you might find interesting, I'm a guy that doesn't really care where something comes from in the world. I'd love to go see it in person. And, you know, but I, I do want to know, well, what kind of water parameters is it like? What's the temperament like? That kind of stuff. So I, I learn a bunch of that. But I don't go, well, what part of Asia is this from? What part of Peru is this fish from? Even though, you know, I'll go and catch some of it myself. That's still not my interesting point. I really want to learn how do they interact in aquariums. Outside factors like where they come from in the world and water parameters can help with that. But, you know, learn to optimize with equipment you're familiar with. Learn to optimize with less equipment, less moving parts. You know, streamline it so if you have 10 tanks, if they all use the same filter, you can have one extra. So if one was to die, you've got it there to go, right? Instead of having, oh, I'm trying 10 different ones. Once something goes wrong, you got to order the part. Then you got to figure out how you're going to keep both of them alive. Yeah, it's it's 
nature is amazing. I, I, I assume you guys know that. And if you don't yet, you will. If you're new to the hobby, there's so many weird things that nature will do. We can't really explain it. There's a lot of things in nature that we think we can explain, and yet we can't. Um, you know, and it, we're talking about people writing papers. You know, there's still papers going on. Is beneficial bacteria one or two different bacterias? What are, you know, what are the optimal growing rates? All of this stuff still isn't really known, even though we've known about it. We've known it existed for a long, many, many, many years now, but we still don't really fully understand it, even with paid teams of people trying to figure it out. So, yeah. Now, that doesn't mean you should never buy anything because we'll go out of business, right? But really think about, is this adding to your experience and will it help you in a way you actually need? Or is this the latest flavor you don't have? Well, I haven't tried that yet, right? And Dean and I talk about this a lot where we go, you know, why don't, you know, we'll get a lot of like, why don't you guys do this? Like, oh, it's too much work. We don't like doing it that way, you know? And that's, and, and you can see from Dean and I, we have very different styles. He loves matten filters and sponge filters. I hate matten filters. I do love sponge filters though, right? He'll use some hang on backs. I'll use some hang on backs sometimes. We both use canisters sparingly where it's needed. Um, lighting, we just like it to look good. That's kind of one of the main things. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell that story. Um, had a had a had a gentleman come into the store, and newer to fish. His kids kind of got into it. Then he kind of really got into it, right? And he wanted to combine his hobbies. So this is that going from low te tech to we're making it crazy high tech. He wanted to build a thing where his aquarium would be a dual stand lower and his snake would be higher. And he wanted the humidity to be the correct humidity for the snake. And uh, that's not where it stops, by the way. So he's, he's trying to work on this system. He's trying to, you know, blow the humidity up there and, and keep it, you know, using a device, which you can measure humidity just for like greenhouse. So you start bringing in other devices, measure humidity, turn the fan on accordingly, right? Manage mold, all that kind of stuff. So he gets that working good enough-ish. And then he decides that now he only wants to use water that's run off from his roof because he just wants to make it that next level harder. And so... Now he's doing that. He's getting mosquito larvae. He's worried about that. He's he's starting to use it, and he's starting to get fish dying because the pH was way too low from the roof uh, stuff going on. Uh, so he finally starts adding minerals back into it. Now, meanwhile, he could use tap water. And half the reason, like, oh, I just want to, you know, and I always ask him, like, why are you making this so hard? Like, oh, I just want to do it, right? That wasn't enough, though. That wasn't hard enough for this gentleman. Next was he wanted to light both the aquarium and the snake with fiber optic from the roof. So the way fiber optic work is, works is when light shines on it, it carries it through the channels of that and will go to where it ends. You probably played with, you know, one of these things somewhere, science class or something. And that was just like another level. But then he couldn't control the sun at all. Like some days would be on in a long time. Some days it wouldn't. There was kind of too much light when a full moon was happening. And he ended up getting out of the hobby because he never made this giant contraption work the way his mind wanted it to. That's And that's a shame because he was really enjoying it until he just turned it up to 12 so you know and it was and every week he'd come in with this like just another problem of like how are we going to solve this and he'd be like i don't know i don't know guy i don't know how you're going to solve your crazy like aspirations because every time we figure it out you just let's keep adding some till it fails so thank you for the gifted memberships by the way kelly foreman with 10 Rock on. And I saw another one, too. Not to forget that the Mexican pizza is back at Taco Bell. By the way, Taco Bell, if you're ever listening, sponsor me. 
I don't even need that much Taco Bell, but I will. I'll start. I almost got the Taco Bell pizza today, except I had a meeting last night and I had a Mexican pizza at a restaurant. I wasn't going to buy one with half of one in the fridge. Five gifted memberships from Ordinary Gamer Tag. Thank you very much. Did I miss any others? No. No, I have not. Hmm. By the way, I just want to say I do love high-tech stuff, and I love tinkering, but I realize that tinkering oftentimes makes my hobby worse. I've seen that in auto water change systems. My... my fish aren't less happy but i'm less happy i have less time hands in the tank removing algae playing learning uh because it's like oh, i'll take care of itself it'll do it right so uh and dean's kind of the same way he it's it's a it's a necessary evil if you travel all the time kind of but it's not better we both acknowledge being in tune and like doing water changes yourself um will get you a level closer to your fish that usually helps you spawn them, keep them happier, get their colors brighter, all of those things. Okie dokie. The med trio for a new batch of Petco fish. They're in a seven and a half gallon. Would I, would you dose the usual 10 gallon dosage or adjust for 7.5? So officially I would tell you like, oh, of course you're going to dose for 7.5. Me? Yes, I would totally just dose like one packet of each. Like I am lazy and I know that there's usually, usually is a key word, a big margin of error there. That being said, you could have something that's right on the line and be like, oh, I overdosed, totally killed them. So do what you're going to do. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy that's just like, mm, it's going to be close enough. I've done this four billion times before. Haven't had a problem. Likely I won't have a problem with this one. Doesn't mean I couldn't. Just means likely I won't. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I hate talking about meds and quarantine and all that because like if we, let's say 10,000 people watch and get helped or, or follow our method, you're going to have like 250 of them that it's just an absolute bloodbath. And, you know, they'll get angry with you sometimes. Sometimes they don't. And they, they just want to know why it went wrong. And so you end up, like, kind of becoming a vet for free, trying to diagnose sight unseen. It's really difficult. And there's always, you know, we had, we had a case on the, uh, the forum. And it was just like, well, you know, maybe it already had some gill damage. Maybe this was going on. Maybe this and this and this and this. But all of that could be fine, too. And we don't know because... You can only get as much out of the person as they're willing to give or they know how to give. Like they're not going to be able to take a, you know, gill clipping and put it under a microscope. They're not going to know the history maybe. And so it's it's a it's a rough gig. And uh, I envy people that are just like, I just don't talk about medicine. It's like, yeah, it's probably a good idea. A lot easier that way. Wow. I, I didn't even know you could do that. Michael Horton gifted one membership. I like it. For some reason, I thought minimum was like five. I dig it. Did they just add the one? I swear, I was just like looking the other day. Maybe I'm just blind because I someone was complaining that you couldn't buy one. Congrats, Charles Vagan, Vagan, two. Um, if you're in the chat right now, by the way, or you're watching down the road, or you're listening on the podcast, the only way to actually type in here is if you're a member. So you still get to watch and all that. Maybe you'll win a free membership. You can click the little dealy bob that hopefully enters you in. And apparently you can win even if you're not listening. So that's good. My next technology purchase is probably going to have to be a dehumidifier. Even with tight lids and no heaters, the humidity in my fish room is uncomfortable. Yeah, this is, a, this is actually a great example of low technology. So I would put a dehumidifier at higher technology. And I use them. I All of my buildings, I use them because I have insane amounts of water, right? And I understand how to use them after using them for many years and learning what to do. The byproduct of a dehumidifier is lots of heat. So do know that, like if you're in Florida or something or Texas or whatever, 
and your room runs warm, it's it's equivalent of running like a 750 watt heater like all the time. You know, like one of those, well, like like this fireplace, right? That fireplace, if I had that thing at like half strength or something, it'd be like running that like all the time. It puts out a lot of heat. And so sometimes it makes sense to go much more low tech. Like, oh, maybe you crack a window. Like I have my window cracked right now. Uh, maybe you uh, have a little exhaust fan or like in the store and that kind of stuff. Like maybe in the middle of winter when uh, it's we really need the humidity out so it doesn't stick to the windows because a lot of people are opening the door, right, coming into the store. We just turn the bathroom fan on. Yeah. Uh, so it exhausts out, you know, heat and also moist air. But do know that, you know, you got to replace the heat. And But normally your house, like, oh, the heater might kick on. Or, oh, it's already too warm, right? So there is ways to do that. Um, and, yeah, I, I wouldn't say, like, absolutely don't do a dehumidifier. Just, you know, figure out if, oh, yeah, I'm just going to replace one problem with another. Because that, that happens with technology all the time. Bought a big giant pump. Now my fish are too tired. They're swimming too much. Oh, no. Like, I was trying to make it so I didn't have as much waste. All right, Ryan Watabi is in the chat. I love low-tech tanks, but I still find myself struggling with balance and algae issues. That's just because you have a baby face. You look like you're 12, even though you're like 25 and 10 times smarter than I am. Uh, but no, that I, I agree that you can use technology to get there. Uh, let's say you bought like a UV sterilizer. That will clear up green water, but it doesn't really teach you how to prevent green water. And I think part of the hobby is learning over time how to get that skill. And so we can pay to get that, get through there. Maybe we buy algae fix, maybe we buy more water flow, maybe we buy UV sterilizer, maybe we're buying more algae heaters, maybe we're doing more things. But with nature, nature could find a balance. Can we observe how to do it? Can we learn how to do it? Can we help it do it? Um, and sometimes we work against it. You know, it's like, well, I'll fix it by adding more, more CO2, more lighting, more fertilizer, more this, more that. And like, oh, I just made a different algae. Oops. <laughs> you know, or I put in a dehumidifier and my tanks got too hot. My plants melted. Oops. All There's always, whenever you do anything, there's a, there's a reaction that happens. In a basement fish room, could I leave exposed pink foam board against the cinder block without drywall and framing, maybe paint it to be mold resistant? In my personal experience, Scott, what I ran into, I had it on the outside wall of like some barn doors. I was trying to insulate it. And the warm air, when it met cold, so like in that basement, if those walls are cold, you're going to get condensation buildup behind that pink foam. And then you're going to have some mold issues. So it might be, and I don't know, this is not my strong suit, but a vapor barrier might go a long way. But if you've got some moisture coming in from the cinder block side anyway, that could be a problem. So sometimes what you learn is that having no insulation would be better. You just blow air across. It stays nice and dry. You're going to pay more for heating but you're not going to pay down the road for the huge mold problem. And, the, and there's people that really, you know, maybe it's a mold remediation company. Maybe it's someone who designs something, but it is tricky in those situations. I haven't found the perfect scenario yet. For me, I end up just going, let's suck out all the moisture. That's the way I've learned to understand it. And so Maybe you run to humidifiers, right? Opposite of low tech. Um, but if you can suck out all that moisture, then you're making so much heat and you're uh, not worried about the condensation, but you're paying an arm and a leg, right? One dehumidifier of a like a 40 pint one that takes out 40 pints a day, at least in my neck of the woods, uh, runs about 50 bucks a month to run. So not game ending, but not free by any means. A thick carpet and, and nice red plants can be done with low tech and the right amount of light? For sure. Yep. It. Too often we assume, like for instance, 
um, we assume we need really high light. But that's from wisdom 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when lighting really did suck. Now, our average LED is so bright compared to like T12 lighting in the 80s. I was actually doing a video today where I was talking about like, if you have a light, you can grow an Amazon sword basically because they used to grow under T12 lights that were three years old and kind of crusty from stuff bubbling up on them and they'd be like a foot away. Yeah, like we knew so little and it would still grow and yet now it'd be like, oh, well, you better, you need a low light scenario, like a stingray. Maybe I should do that video. Maybe, I, maybe I'll do like a, I don't want to call it myth busting, but like, some kind of updating where I go and I find a T12 bulb and like a T8, T8 will be easy, but like a T12 and just, you know, like a T12 shop bulb, measure the par and then show you like a bunch of crappy LED lights and be like, oh my gosh, it is 10 times as strong. And then if you've ever, if you haven't done this, better use your time than installing CO2 or something. Go look and look for like reef aquariums and planted aquariums from like the 80s. And you can see like the worst lighting you've ever seen and still beautiful stuff. Now that doesn't mean we could grow everything under the sun back then, but we could still have really, really eye-catching aquariums with essentially like zero technology because it didn't exist. So, and I, I, and those people of yesteryear knew so much more about that aquarium to achieve that result. And I think there's something you said for, um, like the crappiest led light today, essentially is just a better invention than the T12 bulb for the most part. There are some nuances that we could probably get into like color renditioning and, and stuff like that, but we are fortunate to be like, hey, I can buy a light fairly cheap. You know, even if you just go buy an LED shop light nowadays, uh, if you buy an LED shop light, <clears throat> they are wicked powerful. You grow a lot of algae um, compared to like a T8 shop light. That actually was kind of better and uh, more manageable because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just like, driving a Ferrari. It was like, oh, Toyota Camry. It was like, easy. I can ease into this. Like, it's not just, whoa, whoa, okay. You know? Um, but yeah, I think we can show those differences and, and show, one, how lucky we are. Two, how crazy we've gone from an Amazon sword grew maybe at like, uh, you know, 10 par to like, oh, a Stingray, 18 par. Like, okay, that's almost double. And then you'd be like, oh, the flu of 120 par, like that's just way too much, right? And that's why I run a lot of my flu lights dialed down quite a bit. Um, and, Mo and Dean does too. Dean turns all his lights way down because mostly he's breeding, but even in the plant tanks, way down. The goal is, the goal for me, and I think a lot of people, is the best possible result, whether that's looks, whether that's breeding, whether it's uh, less maintenance, whatever whatever your ultimate goal is, with the least amount of work and investment to get there, right? And so I strive for that all the time because the less time I have to work with the tank, as in like setting it up and, and doing stuff, the more I can be like, look at this thing doing a thing. And then I can learn from that. And, oh, look at the plants doing this. And, you know, uh, I, and I think that's the most beneficial, at least for my brain. I, maybe maybe other people are, are different. I do, I do really enjoy, um, you know, I do really enjoy tinkering with stuff. That is a whole other hobby, and I really love it. But when it comes to actually enjoying fish, from me observing massive amounts of people, that's the one good thing I get. I get to interact with tens of thousands of people, whether it's retail store, whether it's online, whether it's in this chat, whether it's on a forum, I get this bird's eye view. And I, I this is why I feel like we can develop products decently well. Cause I go, everybody's having the same problem. They all like, they all call it something different, but they're all having the same gripe. Let's just fix that. And for the most part, what I see is 
people getting frustrated with, I spent the big money, why don't I get the big result? That's the big frust frustration. And that's why we always went with like easy green and making stuff easier and simpler and not more advanced. It's why we don't sell really hard to take care of plants and, and that because you just become the source of frustration. We attempt to be the source of, um, you know, like hang out and help and welcoming and, you know, calm, even keeled, all of that. We try to do that. I have designed and starting to manufacture some pleco caves and duckweed corrals. Can I send some to you for your further testing and your opinion? Ah, uh, I'll be honest, you can, but it probably won't amount to anything. And I'm not saying that like your thing's not good. Most times I got so many things I have to test that they just like people get they'll email me like a week later. Hey, what do you think? I don't know. It hasn't, I mean, it hasn't even made it to me yet. It's still at a warehouse. And then like six weeks, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I had an event and I had to f film videos. I had to test this product still in a box. Right. And so people will get like angry about it. Um, and then also why I don't kind of like people send me stuff, because if I'm I've had this happen before where I'm already working on a version of that, then they accuse me of stealing it. So it, maybe it's better if you don't send it to me. I mean, I'm not working on a duckweed corral or a pleco cave, but what if I start to in uh, six weeks from now? And then, you know, yeah. So I don't know. I, I can go either way. I, yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the right way to answer that. Any advice for flower horns? Is it true that you keep, wait, you have to keep them very warm like discus? I mean, that's literally the first time I ever heard of that. I'm sure uh, flower horn nerds probably hear that, but uh, I've sold a lot of flower horns. We've kept them at the store before, and I've never treated them any different than most tropical fish. Uh, definitely not discus temp. Now, that being said, I could see Thai flower horns being kept extra hot. They breed faster. They color up faster. They mature faster. All these things faster. And then they might struggle a little bit when they come stateside, let's say, and we're keeping them in cooler water and they're just a little bit stressed out, a little more washed out. That being said, I still prefer, like I prefer a wild discus that can live in almost any temperature than a man-made discus that has always been kept at 90 degrees, right? So I think you can find some that will thrive in your water at normal-ish temps and uh, give you all the look you want, too. Mm. Is it true that a uh, black diamond stingray will get more white spots if it's on white bottom? I have a black foam under the tank and white sand. Sometimes you can see the black. Should I add white tiles? Uh, let me think here. So a couple things that I sec there. One... I haven't kept black diamond stingray, so I don't know. <clears throat> Two, though, do know that, like, you know when you look inside the side of an aquarium, you see it, and you see, you see the reflection. So a bare bottom, and Dean talks about this a lot with me, uh, a bare bottom aquarium, a lot of times you're seeing a reflection, or the fish are seeing a reflection, and not necessarily what's underneath, like the black, right? So... Uh, could you put white tiles in there? You certainly could. Realize that that's going to create, it's going to amplify the light you've got on the tank. It's also going to usually grow a lot of algae. And the the, the fish itself is going to lighten up a lot. So I'm not sure that you're going to want what's going to look like a very stressed out stingray as your look. Most often people like it to be on a black substrate, looks dark, then the spots show up better. Play around with it. Lighting and, and that kind of stuff is super important in aquariums when you're going for looks. Um, but I don't think it's going to give you the result you want. But that being said, I hadn't done it. And I will always like reserve the opinion of like get with someone who does it all the time. And they will be able to guide you better than I will ever be able to. Anyone out there working on more attractive pleco caves? Not breeding, just community tank. Uh, yeah, there is, um, there's like some options on Amazon. A lot of them dried up. It was coming out of like, uh, I want to say Belgium or the Netherlands or something like that. Um, there's, a, there's a few manufacturers working on them, but with the COVID and supply chains, they've kind of dropped off the face of the earth for now. 
Uh, one of them was in Ukraine, I think, actually. So probably not making any right now. Um, you can also make your own caves. That's that's a thing, too. Uh, I, lo I love a coconut cave or something like that covered in plants. Um, yeah. What's the shelf life on the co-op root tabs? I, I may, we might have had to put one on there, but it's got to be like 20 years or something. Like it's Because it's dirt, some minerals, and a gel cap. So, and the most of it is dirt, like a specific mix of dirt. Dirt doesn't really go bad. So, if they get wet, though, don't get them wet. That's not good. All right. How's the wife? Dorkula's doing much better. We're getting ready to go to Europe. Got to have got family coming in to watch over the dogs and the house and the fish and all that. And they'll be arriving this weekend to, you know, orient them on all the things we got to do. Took care of the wasp nest yesterday. Katie, Katie did. Um, got the mow out of the way on Tuesday. Like just getting all the ducks in a row to leave. Uh, which, by the way, if you're going to go to uh, Interzoo, I'll be there a couple of days. I'll be wandering, though. So it's going to be like a needle in a haystack scenario. I will be at... Well, let me, let me see if I, can, uh, if I can give you some insight. Because I will be in the Extreme Booth, and they did send me like, Hey, can you do these? Let's see. The Extreme Booth is number... 215 in building 4A because this thing's massive. It's multiple, multiple buildings and stuff like that. I know I'm doing like two two hour stints on two different days. The problem is, I think it's a three or four day show and I don't know which two days. So, yeah. But, you know, you could probably ask Extreme. That, maybe that's the answer. If you go ask Extreme, hey, is Corey going to be here today or what's his time slot? Yeah. Ooh, Brian says, don't put root tabs near heat either. I guess that kind of goes for a lot of things, but yeah, I wonder how hot before they melt down. Who's looking after the fish? Uh, family member will be. Yeah. Five members from Ordinary Gamer Tag. Woo! In fact, I'm going to match it up. That's, what is that? That's like 11 so far? Is that? No. Yeah. 15, I think. 16 total, but I'll do I'll do some. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Where's that button? Here we go. Hitting that. I'll just do 20. Just make it easy. Even 20. Hit the button. Boom. Because I don't, you know, the money is helpful, but I want people to get into this. Oh, by the way, we have a speaker this Saturday. Speaker being um, Carl Trochu, who is basically a wizard at live bears. I've got some of his fish in my fish room right now. He'll be speaking Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're not a member yet, you got to be a member to watch that. Uh, I shared a couple days ago the video of me touring his place. He's got an outdoor, outdoor fish room. Literally, water changes happen via rain, and it's aquariums. It's super cool. We make some of the coolest fish ever. And uh, that'll be happening on Saturday. You can get your questions asked real time. You'll watch it real time. You can watch it after the fact too in case you're busy Saturday. There's all the old talks as well. And uh, yeah, so the, one of those happens every month. Uh, there's going to be two weeks where I probably won't be live streaming because I'm going to be in Europe. They're, the videos are going to, you know, maybe if you're, they're not your jam, they're going to feel a little repetitive, like, oh, more kind of hacks and tips and things that I've, you know, uh, collected over the years but when i get back or maybe even before i'm back because i'm gonna try and upload while i'm in um you know while i'm in europe we might be able to show some stuff like i i found a lot of cool stuff that i was there last time we're supposed to go to the biggest pet store in the world which i hear is super cool uh we've got basically a plant farm slash studio we're going to go to we've got the guppy championships we're going to we have inner zoo we're going to um supposed to go to a very popular shrimp breeder which i'm staying with chris lukup who popular shrimp guy but not necessarily big breeder 
Uh, he's going to take me around, though, and so we should be able to find some pretty cool stuff. And so what happens there, because people will ask, like, you know, well, when's it coming out? It depends. When I get there, if it makes sense to make the main channel, it makes the main channel. If it doesn't, maybe it becomes a member video. We also might do some vloggy-type content for you guys, because we're going to look at castles and some museums, and we might hop into uh, the water at some different places just to see what's in there, and... Uh, yeah, so I don't know where all the content lands. Like, obviously, if you want to see it all, you got to be a member. We don't hold back that much. That being said, yesterday I did film a 20-plus minute member-only kind of update on my fish room and stuff. So if you're jonesing for that, there's a way you'll be able to see it. Welcome, Michael Werner. Warner. My bad. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Siri? It's Michael Wagner. Or w Warner. Uh, am I going to be at Aquashella Dallas? Yes, I will be at Aquashella Dallas. Highly likely will be at the one at Chicago as well. I, I've got a call like on Friday, tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, right? Maybe I'll ask and see if we're going to cement that in too. Um, but yeah, highly likely I'm, I'm enjoying the traveling part and all that. So, you know, short of something happening, I think it's highly likely at this point. Where do you see the company in five years? And what's your age? And do you like where you're at in life right now? Uh, so I'll start with I'm 39 and I, I have a comfortable life. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, I'm at the point where I get to fly first class. I'm super appreciative for that. I like it. Uh, but the, the counterpoint to that is the reason I invest in first class is because I don't have anywhere else to like spend my money because I'm a workaholic. I work all the time. And so I, and I don't really invest in fish because I already have it all. So I don't have other outside hobbies. Um, so I, I would love to, I'm actively trying to work on a better work-life balance as I have been for many years. If you've been watching the channel, some of you guys know that. Um, and in fact, unfortunately there's, there's one opportunity and two other businesses that I want to start. And I had a meeting about uh, one of them twice this week. And I've got another one that I'm just, I just got to decide if I want to start it. And the other opportunity, I just got to decide if I want to do it. And so all of that goes directly in the face of trying to get a better balance. But I see these gaps in the hobby and I'm like, why not just do it? We could do it. We could probably do that. It doesn't mean it'll work out, but I could make a run at it. Right. So where do I see the company in five years? Uh, I see it under, me probably still doing some live streams here and there, doing some videos here and there, but less videos. I would say like um, maybe I live stream a couple times a month and I make a video once a month and then it would be filled in with other creators, you know, whether it's Zenzo, Irene, Lizzie, Jimmy, maybe other people that want to work for us or maybe other people that just want to make videos for us like Dean or something. Um and then also me spending time on developing products. If there's still the products to be developed, like we, uh, like just in the last, like, well, in the video, you're going to see one we're testing that I, I want to take to market, but we're still about a year out. Um, and then yesterday at dinner where I was having some Mexican pizza, I added another product for Randy to start sourcing so we can start testing so we can start making it better. Um, and so there, the, you do get to a point where, you know, it's perfect for this low tech live stream. There's only so many things that people actually need for an aquarium. Uh, and then you're just making things to make money. And I love money, don't get me wrong. But at a certain point, you know, I try to go where I think there's a gap. And, you know, I've got some ideas, we'll try them. Usually it works out okay, because I do a lot of research. But, you know, there's not you know, Randy sometimes would be like, give me the next five products you think we might want to start working on so I can start getting samples and we can start seeing what we do and don't like. And that, that list is getting harder and harder. Um, you know, short of being like, we don't do a hang on back. Like a hang on back is years of work. Just like the heater has been years of work. Just like the light is years of work. We're waiting on the latest, 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 latest samples um, for the lights. Hopefully they will be here. I don't know when I'm back. I'm really hoping they're I think they're done. Like we asked for all these custom features and I think they were going to have production done at the end of May and then they got a ship. Uh, so 
I'm hoping that I can start playing with them because I got a video waiting that I want to make with them, you know, because I want to make a video on lighting and I want to show this like I'm pretty sure this is the final version of this light. And so I at least want it to be on the tank as I'm doing some stuff. So that way it's not like, yeah, you could buy this light. And then a year later, I'm like, actually, this light's just better. It's cheaper and better. But yeah, uh, in five years, actually, my goal is in one year when I'm 40, the goal is that I could be, not that I am, but I could be independent from the aquarium co-op and it would still uh, have all the great people working for it, still provide for everybody uh, and that I can, you know, maybe swap it from having a few hours a week to uh, do something besides work to, oh, I only work a few hours a week and maybe we, you know, Dean and I film for a day, right? What is this saying? Oh. My resting heart rate's, what was that, 68, 58 beats per minute. Um, you know, we spend a day filming and that, we, you know, entertain you guys. I mean, we live stream, we do this, we do that, and enjoy the labor uh, or the fruits of the labor. Because basically going into, I was 28 at the time, and, you know, we started the store when I was 30. And my 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 commitment to myself mentally, I guess, was, I'll work every hour I possibly can from the age of 30 to 40. And if it works out, I shouldn't have to work after 40. And I have done that, you know, so much so that I tried to work a half day on the day I got married. So, and there's, you know, there's always a phone in my hand or a computer in my lap working on something. And uh, I want to change that though, because it's, there's no reason to do all of that if you don't utilize what you work so hard for. So, um, it, it will be beneficial for everybody, you guys involved, like my best work actually gets done when I get back from a vacation, which we've only done twice, maybe three times. Like we go to Maui every once in a while or Hawaii, and this might be the third one. I don't know. We've either gone two or three times and like after, cause I tell everybody like, Hey, don't, unless the store is on fire or something like leave me alone, basically. And when people leave me alone, all of a sudden I'm like, yes, let's do this idea. I need to do this product. I, like, I become so creative and it's really enjoyable. So uh, I'm hoping that that is what comes from this of like, oh, you stepped away and oh my gosh, I'm doing all of these ideas and I, creatively I'm, I'm freed up because I'm not looking at spreadsheets and numbers and analytics and that kind of stuff. So don't drink easy green. That's right. By the way, the stickers will be going away at some point. Once we get uh, sold down on a lot of stickers, we won't be sending out free stickers anymore. And it's mostly just because we either had to up shipping more or get rid of free stickers. And we thought, you know, we'll get rid of some free stickers. I'm trying to keep things manageable. Do you think you'd be able to take such a step back and be okay considering your work so much now? Being okay considering I work so much now. I don't know, Alice, that's, you know, Randy's really pushing me to step back, not because he wants to take my job, that he sees the work that can come out of me when I'm well rested and I'm focused on something. Um, the biggest things that are always on my mind are HR issues, employee satisfaction, customer satisfaction. But when you can get me away from that and I just focus on like, I need to make a better widget or I need to understand you know, where people are struggling with this problem. I'm really good at that without the interruptions. But the as we the staff gets bigger and I take on more things or potentially launch more businesses and stuff, there's always just like another, um, you know, there's another ping, you know, of like, oh, here's a message from another creator. Oh, here's a message from a team member. Oh, here's a message from HR. Oh, here's a message from, you know, the Washington uh like sales tax people or, you know, there's always something, you know, like we had a, we brought through a safety inspector, you know, and like, well, what was their report? And we got a certificate because it turns out we're pretty good at safety, right? Uh, but we had to, like, we were under by one fire extinguisher. So we, okay, we grabbed another fire extinguisher, but there's always something going on. And the more that I can release that to Randy and Robert and, and Brandon at the store, the more that they just got it all, they got it handled. I can work on new things. Cause that's really what my job is at this point. It's 
how do I take the company forward even more? Not necessarily bigger, but forward even more. Because uh, I got to, you know, there's a lot of people that are very good. Like Candy's great at customer service, right? Randy's great at finding stuff and being being the director of operation. Um, you know, Brandon's good at the store. Robert's good at the warehouse. So, and there's people in in all layers of this. You know, we've got inventory specialists. We've got you know teams of people that do all these things, right? And uh, letting them be good at that role frees me up to be good at hopefully something we don't do yet. I never got free stickers. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you legitimately didn't get a free sticker, email us. And uh, I, I, I don't know. We've probably sent hundreds, hundreds of thousands of stickers out in the last few years. So if you've ordered in the last like couple of years, every order went out with the sticker, unless you specifically asked us. And I think we could put you in to not get a sticker. But short of that, like stickers got sent. I uh, want to set up a fish room, but I'd like to have it in my basement. It stays nice and cool down there, but I don't want to run a ton of heaters. What are some good cooler water fish you should consider? Uh, Goodyeads, a whole family of Goodyead libraries. Uh, Endlers, I think, can go cooler. A lot of, uh, like, rosy barbs. Trying Danios in general can go cooler. A lot of rainbow fish can. And by cooler, I mean, like, 68 to 72 or so um yeah there there is like i've got a top 10 cool water fish video you could watch that would give you 10 more options um yeah by the way if ryu is still around we we really should plan a trip to like japan or something soon i'm i'm itching join my local club to watch Oh, watch me do a med talk in San Francisco right before COVID hit. Glad we got to see you in person. I for, It's been so long since I've given like real in-person talks. I forget about that stuff. We get hit up a lot. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. Do I have an aversion? Maybe I have an aversion to speaking in person. Like it's nerve wracking and exhausting to speak in person. Kind of easy to do it live stream or in video. Um and I, I, I'm getting better at setting the boundaries of like, that's why we're not doing member meetups after like Aquashella because it, my, my body breaks down and, and kind of the, the validation I needed was other people die into like Zenzo and Irene and they're just like, oh my gosh, oh, my legs are killing me and like that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, it's not just me. It's not just like, okay, okay, maybe I am pushing it too hard here. You know, like my voice literally will be giving out. You know, it's, that's not, I can train as much as I want, but your voice only does so much. And by, you know, by day two, it's just gravel in there. I'm convinced that heaters are unnecessary for most tropical fish in normal home conditions. I kind of agree, Sarah. I've done that video and I, you know, I, I end up heating rooms. So like it's. But yes, a lot of times my fish are much cooler than normal and they breed and do well and all of that. And then, but you've got, then you've got Dean who's like the poster child of like warmer temperatures and his does well too. So I, I think, I, I think there's a wide variety and you got to figure out what works for you. You know, there's definitely people like, you can't do that here. I keep my house at 26 degrees. Like I got icicles. I keep falling in the water and stabbing the fish right off my nose from the snot. Like, yeah, okay. Then you need heaters in your tanks in that household. But I think for a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, if you're keeping your, your house 65 and up, you don't need as much heat action in those tanks. Doesn't mean you couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't get more use out of it. But I just don't think you need it. And I, and it, it's one more failure point. That's kind of why I don't like it. So, you're so good at public speaking. I've gotten good. I wasn't good when I started. That's for sure. I was a train wreck. I even took public speaking and community college because I was deathly afraid of it, but it was easier credits to earn. I remember having to give that presentation. Oh, horrible. 
And now I, I still get to like the same nervousness to it. I know what, what helps is, you know, people are there because they want to see you. But what kills me in, in my mind is I hope I live up to the expectation of why they drove this long way here, why they paid money to get in, why they did this and not just be like, you know, if you've ever seen a band, you know, and you like, let's say you, you listen to their music a ton and then you see them in person, you're like, I mean, they were kind of just phoning it in. They weren't trying that hard. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to give people that experience. And so, and I'm afraid of that. And that's what makes it way harder for me. Yeah. Smash that like button, y'all. Uh, would I ever sanction selling aquarium co-op products on the East coast? I'm thinking of buying into a local fish store and would really want the co-op in. Yeah, we do. Oh, I, I, that's some work I haven't gotten done yet today. Uh, we actually have another store. Let me see what the name of their store is. We have another store that just got our products. I'll be posting later tonight. Let me see. Randy sent me the details. Because we, we have this retail partner program, and the goal is to support the stores. And, like, I basically have this guilt, a guilt that, we're pretty good online and we sell to a lot of hobbyists and I'm afraid, I don't think we sell enough, but I'm afraid that if we ever got big enough, like I don't want to, oops, we're a Petco or PetSmart and we're helping like neuter the local hobby. <laughs> and so if I can go, okay, well, let me get them a product that I know is tried and true by us. The breakage rate is crazy low. They should, their customers shouldn't have problems. They'll look good. And so we try to build that. We're building out that program. That's why we're trying to hire a, uh, uh, a supply chain manager to free up some of Randy's time. Let's see. That's, oh, the latest email from Randy that I looked at was regulator package art. Ooh, we updated a little bit while we're waiting on the inserts. Uh, the latest store, da 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 is the aquatic source in Ocala? O-C-A-L-A-A, -A -A, Florida. Yeah, Ocala? Asala? I think it's got to be Ocala. Ocala, Florida. So there's now two, uh, I think, yeah, there's two different local mom and pop shops selling our product in Florida. So, um, yeah. That's, that's, I think that's the, the happy medium we've found. Like we'll sell the product, you know, we sell it. So they should be able to double their money. Hopefully. Well, not hopefully they should. I can't, you know, reason really I can't. Um, but yeah. Uh, I wish I knew supply change management. Yeah. We're, we're, we're pretty strict because like, we do, I guess, demand excellence. Like our customers demand excellence from us. And so we really need people to know these roles and really be good at them and not just like, you know, it, it, the, the person we hire can't be like, I don't know, not working most of the time. I, that's the best way I can put it. Like there's desk jobs where you're like, you know, like office space, like on a given day, I do about 15 minutes of actual work. And then at these higher roles that we've got, well, I, I think even even at the low roles too, like at the store, in the warehouse, like everybody in the company, we're actively working all day long. Like it's, we also try to pay that way though too. So it's it's not, you know, work 20 minutes a day, collect a paycheck. It's like, well, you're going to work eight hours, but hopefully it's something you enjoy. Hopefully it's something like you get a project and you actually work through that and, and see it to all the way to launch and are the customers happy and not just like, oh, I got struck down by management. Therefore, I worked a lot and nothing happened, right? So we try to let all these things happen um, and people find it very fulfilling to be like, hey, I worked on that. It's happening. I saw it all the way through and it was a success. Great. I would like to do that again. And uh, that's what I do every day, basically, is I try to make a new project happen from beginning to end, uh, whether it's, you know, I'm just overseeing or giving input. You know, I like today, I know that we saw the first, like, successful, successful printings of Canadian labels. So when I get back, I'll modify the website a little bit, and we should be able to take some very limited orders. 
And if that test run goes first, we might do that. It's either going to be members or forum probably. We'll probably just make a, a small thing. We want like five or ten, you know, just to be like, hey, let's see how that goes. Wait, you know, the week, did they all show up? It all went to plan. And floodgates for Canada. And then after that, it'll be, you know, okay, after a month or, you know, whatever, let's open up somewhere else. And, yeah. So I, got, I, have to, I have to update shipping rates and stuff like that for Canada. So that's why it, I don't want to screw it up. Wait. Alachua? What, I don't even know what that word is. Call back to a real old video. Uh, but what are you, when are you going to get a bug whacker for the new pond? I need power down there. Um, that's on the, hopefully the summer list. I want to get some, some power run down to the pond. And then like off of our gazebo that's falling apart, which we, we need to build like a new gazebo or dock or something. I, well, I mean, not that we have to, but. I'd like to have a way to hang that off there. Um, yeah, I, I want more lights because at night it's just pitch black down there. Like you can't see anything. We just had a really nice local fish store close down in Minneapolis. It was called a World of Fish. That's a shame. He did not say Ocala perfectly. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't care about names anymore. Uh, what am I saying? What was I just gonna say? Oh, I, I I have been finding it interesting to see that there's a lot of talk in the hobby right now that the hobby is dying, and I think it's misunderstood. Um, I think. People, like, I see more and more people asking, is the hobby dying? And it's because they're, like, they can't buy products. And what I find funny is the hobby is not dying. It's that there's not stuff to buy because everyone's buying it. And then, like, supply issue is a problem. But if we go on too long, like the local mom and pop store, if they go too long without having products, they will go out of business. Like... Twin City Guppies was having that problem where they couldn't get stuff. And I'm like, but if you can't get it, you're gonna, you're gonna go out of business. Like you have to have stuff to sell. And so obviously us getting them some of our products helped some of it, but they were like, they'd been out for like three months of frozen food. And I'm like, you don't get it. You at, at any cost, you have to get frozen food in your store. Because even if you don't make money, even if you lost a dollar every package, if someone comes to your store and then they come back two weeks later, he's still not frozen, two weeks later, he's still not frozen, two weeks later, he's still not frozen, eventually they're just going to stop coming. So even if each time they came to your store and they bought frozen food from you and you lost a dollar, but they bought something else, you would be positive and keep the customer. Um, and that's where I think right now it's, it's a dog eat dog world of like, we're struggling to keep ourselves supplied and everybody is and everyone's working really hard on it. And the hobby might see a downturn if a lot of stores go away and you can't, you know, the frustration factor of like, I just can't get the stuff I want. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I think the hobby is, is like, is fine, but I think what we're going to see is, uh, potentially, people not adapting go out like there I, I see i meet people fairly often they're like yeah haven't had x in nine months and i'm like so you're telling me in nine months you haven't found a way to get this yet like you didn't try different wholesalers you didn't try importing yourself you didn't try like you know imagine if you're like a, a restaurant and you're like oh yeah I'm mcdonald's yeah we don't have burger patties for nine months like you're not shocked when you're like, oh yeah, that that burger that that McDonald's isn't there anymore. Like yeah, they didn't have burgers for nine months, but somehow in the you know the mom and pop world, uh, we kind of get trapped in this like, well I don't know. I mean both my wholesalers don't have it. I guess I just wait, and you know it, it's kind of like you know we're stuck with uh, you know someone was asking, uh, you know where's our linear air piston pumps and. 
we're stuck under, um, you know, basically having one distributor and it's a manufacturer. So if we could go to China, we'd be looking, how could we find another one? Or like, I'll be looking at Interzoo. Is there anybody else making linear air piston pumps? Because I got the money and I don't have the pumps. I got the buyers, but I don't have the pumps. And so, uh, you know, we, we got to get out there and you just got to look. And and there are times where like, nope, no money on the service can buy this product. You know, like Miramma Moss Balls right now. Like, really? No money can get you those. Like, you can get some pretty crampy ones, but... You know, that's like a natural disaster type of scenario, which not natural, but like something out of the control of norm, like, you know, and, and how that goes is like, at a certain point, everybody's tolerable. Like during COVID, people are like, oh, I get it. Right. But now we're like, hey, your competitor has it and you don't. And you're just saying it's a COVID slash supply issue. At some point that becomes a like, oh, you're just not getting it. I'll just go buy it here. And that's what happens. And then you lose that little bit of money, and then you don't have the money. You know, at a certain point, you've lost enough money you can't afford to find and search and, and maybe pay a little bit more and fill the hole. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of just like, yep, sales keep going down. We can't really stop it without a cash infusion. Okie dokie. I'm seeing it as an opportunity to let stores know we expect the fish to be taken care of in the store. I'm supporting healthy, responsible businesses, and I'm off to work. Yeah, I, I do. You know, I started a thread on the forum. And I still agree that, uh, you know, it's not in my best interest, by the way, but uh, people should su support their local stores where they can. Spend your money there, especially on fish and plants and, you know, if, if frozen food, stuff you can't buy online for sure, uh, and help them because it's, there is something like even if you don't utilize that local store that much, you want other fish keepers around you. You want a local club. If you don't have one now, maybe you want one someday, right? Like, and not everyone does, but maybe you like maybe you never want to see a club, but wouldn't you want people in your your neighborhoods to have access to one? Like, why wouldn't you want the middle school to like? Oh yeah, they all show up to aquarium club like. Those are just good things for the hobby and, and the planet in general, I think. Plants showed up today. Man, they were packed nice. Well, you can thank the warehouse crew for that. Like, we, I went, we, we, I, they, we went through a lot of testing with different, you know, different things and, and having, like, those sleeves of plants come in, we literally have manufactured for us. They didn't exist before that. We invented that product, which we don't sell it. We just use it to ship, you know, and like the liners, like liners existed before. So it's like we didn't invent liners, but nobody, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but no one I had ever ordered from was using uh, reusable little liner tote bags to ship plants in the cold and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I think now, I, I don't know if we're on to it now, but soon soon or we already were at the tail end when we start shipping uh plants again that need heat packs we're now up to the 96ers which no one was in well i shouldn't say no one we had no sources to get them in the united states before uh and now we just import them ourselves so we got that extra day of heat my coop Pogo stemmons, Stellatus octopus, reached the top of the 55 in three weeks. It's a fast-growing plant. There's a lot of people who be like, mine died. I don't know what happened. And I'm going, I don't know. Mine, like, wrapped my leg and ate it. It grows so fast. My power went out in New York. I need a co-op air pump with a battery and a big battery for fridges. Yep. I got, I, I feel you. I've got a couple bigger-ish battery things. I don't know what to do about this. I've got, I've got a, I've got a, a battery company that sent me that battery. You guys may have seen it in a video for like a quick second, and the first one failed, and so then I end up getting another one, and they're just harassing the crap out of me to make a video and like promo it to you guys and like give you a coupon code and all that kind of crap, and it's not bad. 
I just don't know if it's exactly worth that much money. Like to the people that need one, it's it's okay. And and then they they started like threatening me, like you gotta send it back. And I'm like, the first email said I'm never guaranteeing I'm gonna make a video. Um, and they they just wanted to make one video, and they're like, oh, and then you can keep it. And they're trying to guilt trip me into the customer service rep says that. Uh, they'll have to pay for it if I don't ship it back. And I was like, well, then come get it. Like, I'll put it in my warehouse. You can have a driver pick it up. Uh, and they're like, well, no, 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 no. You know, so it's this big back and forth of like, you're tainting me wanting to do this video. Even if I start thinking your product is legit and nice, it, it is. It'll run my it'll run my fish room air for five days without power, which I need that and I like it. But they're pushing me too hard. I have a question. You'll be able to help. What color should I paint my aquariums for recording and the shop? I have done black. I've done blue. I've done custom painted backgrounds uh, where we've got like gold and different colors. You can see them in some of the fish store videos we do. My advice, black. The whole new store expansion all will be black. Uh, the blue backed aquariums that we'll be taking it out eventually will never be replaced with anything but black. Blue, basically every color that's not black really shows off algae when it grows. And, you know, you'll be like, oh, I'm pretty good at keeping up algae. And so was I. Now you'll be eight years later and maybe you're not in the store every day, but is employee number 292 really good at algae? And do you want to spend $22 an hour from to scrape algae when the back could just be black, you don't see the algae, and it's a great source for the next batch of autos or the next batch of plecos, right? Yeah. So yeah, definitely just recommend just doing black. The reason I had, I had like five aquariums with blue backgrounds, and I was like, yeah, I want to show off black mollies and other fish that are dark, but it's not worth it. It is not worth it. So I highly recommend just doing black in freshwater. You know, I know some people like blue with uh, with salt water, but I've always been sad at the blue backgrounds that I've had. Yeah. In, in, a, in a professional setting. At home, if you have one tank, you can clean it. But in a professional setting where you have, oh, I've got 100 tanks i got to manage, you'll be cursing like, why did I make these in anything but black? I can see it. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, we do have a new product you might have seen on the community page. We do carry bulkheads now. They are sourced in the USA or made for us in the USA. So hey, it's in, we had the chance to make something in USA, so we did. Great. Um, we'll be adding probably the one and a half inch and the two inch size at some point. I just ordered a bunch of two inch before. So basically what happened was, here's how this goes down. The classic story, right? I, uh... I needed a bunch of two inch bulkheads for the store expansion and I was going to buy them. And I was like, man, these have gotten crazy expensive. And, uh, so then I was like trying to see if we could find a wholesaler that had a bunch. And then when I was starting to look at other bulkheads, I was like, all right, these are all gone up and they're not abundant anymore. And I was like, maybe we should carry, because we thought about carrying bulkheads. We brought some in from China and stuff and they were garbage. Uh, like, 18 months or two years ago. And so we dropped that idea. And then now here I am needing bulkheads again. I'm like, I need one inch ones. I need two inch ones. I need bulkheads. Dean needs bulkheads. Like I need bulkheads for my house. I'm like, man, I really should just sell bulkheads. I need them. And so, uh, these ones right now, all three sizes, the three quarter inch, the one inch and the half inch, they're all five forty nine Cause they basically cost all the same money. If we start selling a ton of them, if I start buying them, uh, I think 2,000 at a time. It's like 2,000. If I buy like 2,000 half inch ones, our buy price goes down and we could potentially lower the price by like, you know, 50 cents or something. But I don't necessarily want to be like, yeah, I've got $100,000 in bulkheads that aren't selling. So right now we're seeing how many other crazy people besides me and Dean need bulkheads. And then we'll, we'll double down if we need to. Uh, what kind of paint for backgrounds on aquariums? I use oil-based because I find it lays out better. 
Um, I've done latex before. I've done uh, like Plasti Dip before. I've, I've done a lot of stuff. And what I found is oil-based paint on the glass seems to have the least amount of bubbles and least amount of problems and get you that nice, even background that I want. Um, and I, I always clean the backgrounds first with alcohol. Um, but yeah, I use Rust-Oleum Black oil-based with a roller. That's what I do. And it's quick and easy and, you know, you want it to be that way because I paint the sides, the bottom, and the back. And if you're doing that on 100 aquariums, it's hours and hours and hours. Like, even if you just do 100 aquariums, all the backs of them, right? Like, that might take you a couple hours. And then you got to let that dry for, like, a day, tip it up on its side, do the side. That's a couple hours. And so it's like, you know, it might be four or five days of aquarium painting in a big space to get it done. So in each between each one, you know, you prop it up, then you got to alcohol it, and then you, as by the time you get to the last one, the first one's dry, you start painting, and you kind of do that zigzag again. So... What time is Saturday's talk on the East Coast? It should be at 2. I think 2. Chuck Davis. That's not Chuck Davis from Florida, is it? it? Looks like a different picture, though. I mean, that doesn't look like a Chuck Davis I know. Ask for advice on fulfillment processes. How does it work for you? If you don't want to answer, ignore, and I'll try to catch a business stream. Uh, we use Shopify, which is, you know, a standard online platform. People place an order, kind of goes in our queue. And at the very beginning, if you watch some of our oldest videos, you'd see that like in the morning, we would just get to work early and we'd pack them uh, and ship them out. And, you know, we would take them to the, the post office ourselves. And as we got bigger, then the post office would pick up from us. And as... Like, if you're just packing one order a day, it's pretty easy to be like, yeah, uh, yeah, these are the right items. But what happens mentally is as you pack more and more and more packages per day, you start going, oh, no, I forgot the sponge filter. Oh, no, I forgot the thing. And then when you're, like, right now, um, I think we're shipping, like, I don't know, maybe three or four, maybe it's 6,000, maybe 6,000 items a day. And even though it's over multiple employees, like you just your mind starts becoming numb. And we use a system where we're actually packing three orders at a time or picking three orders at a time. So you might be like, oh yeah, I gotta grab hats. And the software we use, we pay lots of money for software, you know, lots, lots of money, thousands and thousands, thousands of dollars every month. But it'll group orders that have this hat, the Murphy hat. It'll go, okay, these three orders, they all need a hat. It'll try to get the most common items together. So you go, oh yeah, I need two hats. I'm going to need three easy greens. I'm going to need one root tab. Oh, I need three phosphate pads. And so that way it's the least amount of walking around a warehouse for the employees. It, so that saves us money, saves you guys money because we don't have to pay as much to get it done. So, um, you know, if we can get a bigger warehouse someday, we're looking to move to like a system to do 12 at a time. But our warehouse isn't big enough to really do more than three at a time. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I, I just started out listing one product at a time, show up to work early, ship anything that needed to be shipped, work the whole day, rinse and repeat. If it was slow in the store is when I'd be trying to add a new product on, you know, midweek when you're a small store. Oh, there's a couple hours. All right, I'll work on that. You know, you don't know. Someone can walk through the door at any moment, but um, yeah, that's how I did it. I have a question for you. Have I ever done African cichlids in my fish room because your water is so hard? Uh, not in this fish room. I In the first fish room I ever did, it was pretty much all African cichlids because I worked for a store. There was 300 tanks, and like 250 out of 300 was all African cichlids. And so I'd breed a lot, sell them to the store, and supplement my kind of low wage at working at a fish store. Um, so yeah, I bred tons of, you know, peacocks and jakes and... Uh, you know, some Mabuna like Demosoni and, and Lemon Cichlid, not Lemon uh, Labrachromis, um, Lupi, other tangs like Sips and stuff like that. But in this fish room, no, I've got some yellow labs out there and a few Sips, but I haven't really like intentionally bred them because 
most of the water around me isn't good for it. And so they don't sell that well, like at the store or anything. So it, it becomes this like, I made a bunch of a cool fish, but man, it's hard to get rid of it locally and shipping's a pain. So. Have I ever kept or heard of the serpent loach? Hmm. Let me Google it. Because that's a rare enough fish. Like maybe I'll be like, oh, I know that is a sumo loach. Um, I don't know that I have. It looks similar to like an Angelicus loach, but different. Yeah, I don't think I've kept that one. I've got an empty, wait, I have an air stone in my pickle jar aquarium. Only for the plants, maybe an assassin sale. Should I add filtration? Nah. Nope. Uh, is the air stone beneficial? Yeah, I would say you're getting oxygen exchange. You're making sure the bacteria stays. Like, bacteria uses a lot of oxygen. It's also bringing in CO2 for the plants. Like, yeah, I would say that it's a worthwhile thing having. Planning to try the phosphate pads for algae control based on Ben Ochart's recent video that he recommended them. Yeah, that's kind of why it was in my brain because I, I keep meaning to, like, reach out to Ben and be like, yeah, it was a good video. Thanks for doing it, buddy. And, uh, yeah, African cichlid tank using the, the phosphate pads started uh bringing down the algae as it's supposed to do how do your geos and the 800 gallon do with plants looking to add plants for my top of hose uh pretty good you can actually i talk probably like five minutes out of the 20 minute video that'll be coming out probably next week uh my fish room update because i put more plants in the 800 gallon and uh you can learn more about it the uh, the tank at the store also has juropares in it and we have a full carpet of pygmy chain sword so it can be done and mostly it's just getting the uh the initial ones kind of rooted in and then it can go my order shipped four hours after i placed it amazing that's right we by design our our, our goal is as fast as possible i'm so tired of when i order stuff and uh they're shipping slow. What most people don't know this, you know, someday this will come to light and then people are going to be like, Oh, no wonder. Um, but mo, I don't know about most, but maybe most, most businesses use what's called a three PL, which ships for you. So in the instance of like, uh, keeping fish simple, let's say he's running his store, right? He's running a store, uh, in Australia. And let's say he doesn't have a warehouse to ship his products. You can buy product and have it sitting in a warehouse. And when the order comes through on your website, that team of people, maybe across the country, will ship it for you. Uh, just like we could do that. And we've looked into it, but we haven't pulled the trigger yet. Uh, we could do that in Europe. We could do it in Canada, where we ship a bunch of product there. It sits there in the warehouse. When someone pay places the order, it gets shipped from there. Uh, the problem for us is that no warehouse like that is going to be able to do live plants, right? And, uh, you know, and quality control. What we've seen is we run a crazy tight ship where we can go months without having a miss ship. And then it's kind of the wild west with what's the cheapest labor in this warehouse because people don't want to pay to have it ship or pay someone to put it in a box and ship it. Uh, so that's, but that's what you're really seeing most times is like, I think I ordered some underwear from old Navy and it took them four days cause I shipped it from a three PL. That's a lot of times when I see it shipped from multiple warehouses as well. If you order a lot of something, um, there's a lot of that going on cause it's, it's, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's more profitable. I, I we, we looked into it. Well, we would save a lot of money if we didn't have employees to ship stuff, but it wouldn't be the quality. And, and you know, that's we like the quality. And you guys like the quality. So it's just that's the way it's got to be. My last order arrived a day early. That's right. That's what we like to hear. My local fish store can't find chili rasboras. Does anyone know where in Florida uh, who currently has some chilies? Hmm. I don't know. Call it bad fish. Ask her if she can get some. Like, we've got them in our store all the time. And 
This is that comfort zone thing. So often local fish stores will rely on their one local supplier and the local supplier just doesn't have a thing. And then uh, like they just don't get it, but they could order from other places. I stopped ordering from Aquahuna for a bit. Their fish are way too small. Oh, too small now. Yeah, I mean, you're ordering from a fish wholesaler. That's where we get it. So, you know, you, yeah, if they're coming in small, you can wait. Uh, I was going to use that as a point of just like, we run into the same problems as wholesalers. You order a fish, comes a small, you got to power feed it, get it to an appropriate level that someone wants to buy it from us, right? So, uh, you know, but I will say, I was looking on there, some of the prices are amazing. And I don't know how it's set up, but... Did you guys see the Celestial Pearl Daniel hybrids? I might have to get some of those. They're sold out right now, so I, I can't get any. But I was looking today, and I was like, I didn't even know that there was Celestial Pearl Daniel hybrids. They look pretty cool in a stressed-out thing. So I wonder if they like look amazing in a, like a well-planted tank. Will I be selling plants to Canada or just products? Just products. The plants, you like if you order them from a website, you have to have a, a permit to import them. And obviously, most people aren't going to spend a bunch of time and money to get a permit, so it won't make sense. Uh, let's see here. New member. Oh, wait, remember. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to, every time someone re ups, it's a remember. I like it. <laughs> Remember Leo Watts. What's my favorite taco to eat in your fish room? Uh, if you've ever had a chance, Taco Time Northwest is delicious. It's a lot of fresher ingredients. Hard shell taco. And I like them to put a little bit of their like ranch sour cream mix on there. Pretty good. Otherwise, a nice like guilty pleasure would be Jack in the Box tacos. They're so greasy and not good for you, but awesome. It takes me back in time. Joss's frog spread long pin celestial pearl danios. Hold on, let me see this. Let me see if that's all right. Pulling up the YouTube video. Less talking to the person. Oh my gosh, that is a long fin. All right, I'm impressed. Hadn't seen that before. You shot the video in vertical, you're killing me. I'll link it to you guys. Well, that video came out today? Yesterday. I'll put it in the chat. Boom, there it is. That's pretty sweet. I got, I got, yeah, that's pretty cool. I wonder if they have any, I, I, obviously I can't listen to the video right now. I wonder if they have any for sale or for, like, that's just the first kind of, they're pretty big, so I don't know if that's the first spawning or not. Pretty cool, though. That's neat. Let's see. Quick question, when selling fish to a store, how do I price out what to sell the fish for without being overpriced? Well, that's kind of difficult sometimes. Um, I would say usually, like a, a, a rough rule is one third is what a store is probably paying for stuff, but that's, it's not always that way. Um, maybe like a Zebra Daniel, they're paying one fifth, and maybe like a Zebra Pleco, they're paying half. That being said, just because, you know, just because we each own a fish doesn't mean they're the same quality, doesn't mean they were the same health, same size. Usually what happens is the more reliable you are and the more you built a relationship, the more money you can get for your fish. <clears throat> like with Dean, Dean pretty much goes, hey, do you want these? And we just go, yes, because it's been years and years and years, and he never delivers us bad quality. He culls. He does all this stuff. We don't have to worry about it. And if there ever is something that gets by, if we were to say something, he'll make it up 110%. He'd be like, ooh, there was one other problem. Let me refund you five. Because Dean knows he wants us, so we never even second guess or worry about a fish ever. And so it makes it really easy when he just makes it fair, you know. So that's where maybe you start around a third. 
and hopefully you've got something they want. Yours are a little bit bigger, a little bit healthier. Over time, they rely on you for that. And then maybe you get to a point where it's like, hey, let's go 50-50. I'll bring them in extra big. I'll bring them in the day you need. I'll sell the exact ones. If they die in the store, I'll bring in new ones, all that kind of stuff. Like you actually kind of get into business with them instead of a transaction. So that I guess that's the difference. If you can get into business with them, basically, you can get more money. Where if it's just a transaction, it's in their best interest to get them for as cheap as possible. And it's in your best interest to get the most possible. You're not really making sure that both people win. I sold my Green Dragon Pleco Spawn for $3 a fish. Store is retailing them for $12. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really fault, and not that you are, I don't really fault anybody because it's like, you know, Retail can be real expensive for rent. There, there's there's lots of factors that go into it. Um, yeah, it also depends on size too. You know, are they ready to sell, or are they got to sit on it a little bit, or or the other good news, the other good thing is too, like a spawn could have been a hundred green dragons. Like it's gonna take a long time, so I better get a real good deal if I'm buying a hundred green dragons. If it's six, oh, that'll sell this weekend. I'm willing to pay more for that. And if they're bigger, okay. Who designed the images for your stickers? Um, for a while, we were using an artist out of uh, Vietnam. And then uh, I think Sam Scales for some other ones. So Sam Scales does freshwater art. He did the, the shirt that we give away lately. Uh, what else has he done? we got to work on some other products too, but you can reach out to him. Am I the only one that doesn't like long fin varieties? I'm sure you're not. I mean, I know there's a lot of people only like original fish. I just think it's, you know, I like a long fin neon tetra looks pretty cool. Not all long fins look strictly better. I guess I'm just excited because there's so few new things that show up in the hobby every year. I'm like, wow, I hadn't seen that. That's super cool. So, and I know someone put a lot of work in to pull that off. So I'm really interested in seeing, um, in person, yeah, because they might they might be beautiful. They might just be like, yeah, yeah okay, they're long fin. You know, like a zebra danio to me is like, meh, it's long fin. But I really love like blue leopard long fin danios. Oh man, those are great. Watching Corey's fireplace while enjoying the ninety degrees here. I got news for you. It is a it is a electric fireplace, but it's got a mode. I just have it on for the ambiance. There's no heat coming out of it. <laughs> I've got some other stuff to redo the room a little bit, but it just arrived today, and I don't have time to get it done before I go. So, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on putting a little... I want it to be ultra cozy. That's, you know, the total just, like, chill, lower light. Like, yeah, this dude's hanging out talking fish. I traded 20 of my mollies for ornamental goldfish for my pond. It was 40 bucks. So wait, you... Oh, yeah, so you got basically like two bucks a molly. That's another thing, too. Like, if you're trading, there's always like... Especially if you're like, oh, they want a slow mover and they're trading us something that'll move fast. Like, sometimes there's really good deals to be had. Sometimes there's not, too. Like, oh, you want to trade your... Uh, you know, you want to trade your full-grown Oscars and you want us to trade out the Zebra Plecos? Like, <laughs> no. Can I keep a six-inch Max Pleco with discus? Yeah, because uh, you've got discus. Well, temperatures can be a thing, too. I haven't had a problem where I keep... If you keep a... Uh, in my experience, if you keep the plecos well fed enough, they don't go suck on slime coat. Once a pleco starts on slime coat, though, they pretty much always like to do that. So if you already have one that does it, I wouldn't try it. But if you can use Rapashi and other things to really keep that thing well fed, there's a chance that he'll never go after slime coat. But don't get lazy. It's easy to go, oof, I, you know, I was a little lazy for a couple of weeks. Yeah, the, the sun and the clouds are doing some crazy stuff. I wonder if I'll watch the video back if it's like, you know, changing a lot. 
Let's see. Oh, she gets some good close-ups of the CPDs. They're gorgeous. Guarantee you will love them. Who do I suggest for the best blue platy so I can start my own blue swordtail line? Uh, I don't know. I usually just get them off Aquabid. I have a strain right now that I got off Aquabid. I want to say I got them from the user. God, what's, what's, what's their username? I see it all the time. Mobetta. I think I got them from Mobetta. I also, Freshwater Dreaming, are you local? Well, you want to start your own line. Because I've, I've got, like, I could probably just give you mine. Because I, I, they still need to be worked with. They're still throwing reds and the blues. But I'm just not spending the time to develop them. I mean, I still have them. I just, I'm not actively working them, I guess. Have I ever heard of Aurelius Barb? Sure. Yeah. Type of Indian Barb. Definitely have. How many subs we get today? 64. Hair below 500. <laughs> I'll still match, by the way. I think I'm going to, until further notice, I'm going to match forever because I don't so much care about the money. I just want people to be able to enjoy the speakers and that kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to match until there's a reason like YouTube tells me not or I... I lose too much money or whatever. Um, yeah. I've got some white hair like algae growing over my aquarium plants. It's very hard to pull off and the off of the plants. Any idea what it is? Sounds like a, a staghorn algae. We've got some articles and some videos that you can, you know, kind of reference. And then uh, if it is, we've got some treatments for that. You know, whether you're going to go chemically or you're going to go with fish, something like that. Space Guy Ty, who is a new member buying fem five memberships. That's what I like to see. Paying it forward. I like it. I'm going to match it if I can hit the right screen. I got to get these big numbers. So when I have a meeting with YouTube, they give us a new feature. Every time I do well at something, they're like, uh, so it turns out uh, we got this other thing. Are you interested? And I'm like, yes, yes, I am interested. Because I like playing with the new fun toys. If you crossbreed peacocks, how many generations before they breed true? Or will they always have a mix of hybrids? I don't know. I never I never ran into that problem because usually you're, you're working with like Reuben Reds or you're doing OB peacocks or something like that. And you never really ran into like, Oops, it's not OB. Every once in a while, you be like, ooh, that OB pattern's not so good. Like, don't make that one breed. But for the most part, it worked out pretty good. My honey garami is very picky. I tried flakes, pellets, and brine. She barely eats anything. You might look into uh, deworming if you haven't done that yet. Sometimes if they got some parasites and stuff in them, they don't want to eat at all. Uh, also make sure that... Uh, you know, make sure that, like, the food's new enough. I was processing, people think my hair is fake. I just got a haircut today, that's all. It's real. Real hair. Oh, yeah. If I could suggest a feature to YouTube, what would it be? What would I be? What would it be? Hmm... What would the one feature be that I would recommend? There's there's optimizations for sure. Like, I feel like all member... Like, I feel like if you're a member of my channel, you shouldn't ever see ads on my channel. I think that should be a thing. Like, that's just an optimization, though. So I'm thinking, what is something I would actually add, though? Um... Memberships was my biggest one for a long time. I still want a way that I can pay for a membership for all my employees. Like that still needs to be a thing of like, yep, let me just auto pay for my employees. Um, but there's gotta be something that I really want to utilize that I can't or should, should, uh, should exist. Of course you grow a Mohawk. I've had a Mohawk several times in my life. Maybe not several, twice, I think. Uh, there's gotta be, I know there's gotta be stuff. I don't know why I'm blanking on, here's what YouTube needs to do. 
Yeah. Ooh, photo com. Yeah, that's okay. That's a feature that I really want. Photo comments for YouTube members. I like that. What I really want is uh, like on YouTube or on Facebook. The only thing I like about Facebook, even though I don't use it, I love that I can reply to people with video. So I can just take my phone and give a video reply. So imagine like right now we're doing the live stream, right? And you guys ask a question, I answer it. I could do this one-on-one -on -one, though all the time and it's super good for me because it's like, oh, I got 10 minutes for dinner's ready? Yeah, let me answer three questions. Kind of like I was trying to do in in the like the stories format, but I think it would be way better is video replies in the YouTube comments. Yeah. I yes, that is that's a feature I've been asking for. I feel all co-op teams should be free. Yeah. Me too. Like my employees like Candy and just other people, like they shouldn't like Brandon's a a, a member. They shouldn't have to pay. Like, but there there literally is no way for me to pay for them. So like, sure, I pay their wages and they choose to do it, but I would really love like a way on my on the back end here of like, yeah, put in these names and they're all like they get the perk and charge me, that's fine, right? Uh, so YouTube still gets this cut or whatever, but make it so that the other thing that uh, is missing from memberships that everybody wants, like from Twitch, is you can pick someone. So you could say, hey, this person right here, I want to donate a membership to them, right? <laughs> I get my hair cut every four weeks. It's not two weeks, not five days. It's four weeks. Uh, let's see. Can I change that? Oh, wait. I can change it here. I'm going to open it up a little bit. Let some mayhem happen. Let's see. How do I get there? Mm -hmm. Make it so subscribers can chat for a little bit. Maybe subscribers will become members so they can chat. Maybe I can't do it. Huh. Will it not let me do it? Oh, wait. Right here. I got it. All right, as long as you've been a subscriber for at least a day, you'll be able to chat with with, any, with anyone. Boom. There you go. The floodgates have been released. Because it's towards the end. Uh, let's see here. What's a way for me to send a picture of my tank for some plant suggestions? Uh, post it on the forum. You can tag me, and if I have time, I'll try. Otherwise, a bunch of other people will give you those suggestions, and you kind of get a great result anyway. That's the best way I've found. Yeah, you realize how many pictures of fish you, Corey would get with what's wrong with my fish? Yeah, yeah. No, the creator responds to other people. I don't want people to give me a video. You can say, you know, how much crushed coral do I have to add to stabilize my pH? I have very hard water, so it's a very low buffer. Right? You ask that question in text, I reply with video. And I would say, like, ooh, yeah, you know, I would lower the water changes. So don't do water changes often because it takes longer to dissolve crushed coral in harder water. Uh, that being said, if, uh, yeah, if you don't have high pH, it'll wear away at it pretty quick. But if you do have high pH, you might want to just do sprinklings of uh, baking soda to fix that problem. And that's all of that is like takes way too long to articulate well in text. So it's like, ah, I skipped that question. How many members do we have now? Not quite enough. I really would love to have that number be 5,000 for that meeting with YouTube. They're actually trying to get me to meet with the membership team while I'm in Europe because I guess they're in Europe also. Because I, I was already like, I don't know if the time difference is going to work. And they were like, oh, well, they're in Europe too. And I was like, oh, okay, well, let me look at my schedule. So I, because I, I, like a 5,000, it's just like a, a vanity number. And they'll be like, whoa, that's a lot, right? Even though I'll be like, yeah, I, I donated all the money to like buy more because the money is not the important part to me. I just want I want that number. Get me into that next, that next uh, alpha test. Let me see. Can I see? Where am I looking for? Oh, yeah, members. Oh, it won't even update till tomorrow. So there's always like a, at least a 24-hour lag. So it won't even tell me. So before today, we had 4,761. 
So we would need to hit that number. We roughly need uh, that'll be eight thirty. So we need like one hundred and seventy more, roughly, to hit it. So we're not we're not not that close yet. Welcome, Jason Holbrook. I'm new here. How do I access the forum? You go to forum.aquariumcoop.com or just go to aquariumcoop.com, click the learn button, and then click forum. You register there and you can hang out with all of us. Kind of, It's kind of like this feel, but, uh, you know, in a slower format. Earl Innes just found out about you a month ago, made my first purchase from your company. I must say, you and your team have exceeded my expectations. I love to hear it. I'm glad that we're exceeding, uh, not just meeting. Our, and we literally, we had a meeting just the other day. We want uh, the best customer service in the world. And so we're making more steps to make that happen even better, which seems difficult, but I really want us just to have the absolute best customer service. And so, um yeah, keep your, you know, at some point in the next probably, I don't know, a couple months or something, we'll be hiring another customer service rep. So keep your eye out for that. Maybe turn on notifications because uh, we'll be opening up internally most likely. And then also, you know, we'll, we always we always take the best candidate. Um, and whether that's internal or external, like we want someone that really fits the roles that we put up. So. Ooh, thank you, Jason Livingston and Dorkula. 20 and 10, that's 30. If I match it, that's 60. Let me let me match it. We're getting closer. Getting closer. Ooh, and block style, that's 61. Let me match this. Oop. I'm trying to buy them too fast. Hopefully my credit card doesn't get locked out again. There we go. Back to the live stream. I'm too much spam. Too many members. I watched so many of your vids. One of my one of my fans is an old guy that runs a store with no water changes. One of my fans. Maybe I don't know if you meant favorites or fans, but yeah. Um, one of my fans is the old guy that runs a store with no water changes. So it must be Justin in San Francisco. Yes, indeedy. Cool dude. Ooh, Michael Young coming through with 20. I like it. I'll match that here in a moment. Another five from Freshwater Dreaming. Thank you very much. Hype train. My first aquarium is cycling. Awesome to hear, Slick. Do I need to add more fertilizer? Seek him flourish every week or just the initial dose I put in? Uh, you're going to add it every week. Uh, as your plants grow more, you'll probably have to add more. So right now, if you're putting like, let's say it's a capful, right? If your plants are twice as big in a month, you might be doing two capfuls. And just as a side note, uh, Seachem Flourish is a little bit diluted. And by a little bit, I mean quite diluted. Uh, so it means you can't really overdose. It's kind of, you know, pretty hard to do that, but you might have to be dosing a lot of that to keep your plant leaves from turning yellow. If you run into a situation like that, look into a fertilizer that's got more uh, nitrogen in it. Ooh, 10 from Jessica Bryant. So wait, that's 10, 15, uh, 35. Let me, let me catch up with that because then I can do more math, see if we make it. My hope is that a lot of you guys and gals stick around and uh, like sub up yourself. Like you'll get value out of the talk on Saturday and some of this other stuff. And uh, oh wait, can I can I buy it from this screen? Will it let me now? No, it won't. In the own the back end, it won't let me buy them. But I can super chat. But in the front, like where you guys see, I can do it. Hopefully, they'll fix that someday. All right, let's buy another 20. That'll get me, that'll buy me some time to answer questions. Oh my God, I got one. That's right. Did I miss any? Dana Knight, thank you very much. You get a membership and you get a membership and you get a membership. 
Everybody gets a membership. See you later, Tigress5606. Day 14 of a fish in cycle with a beta. Do I do a water change? No ammonia, very minimal nitrate and nitrite. If it's 0.5 and under, I say don't do a water change. Just let nature take its course. If it's above uh, 0.5, then I change down to 0.5. So I wouldn't do like 100% water change if you're at 1. I would just be like, oh, 50%, give me to 0.5. Because you need some in there to let the aquarium like bacteria replicate to process that. Tyler Kaplan coming in with a clutch five. Thank you. Can't wait to set up my nano tank and buy an army of shrimp from the store. That's right. I do like the shrimp army. I need to make like a shrimp army shirt. I made. I bought a shrimp hat off Amazon. I, just, I didn't wear it today. Well, if I wear it on a live stream, people will be like, hey, do you sell that? No, we don't. Uh, let's see. What was that? Oh, Fly River Turtle update. Uh, you'll be able to see that next week. We're redoing the tank. You see what's failing, what's working, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but overall, Elmer's doing good. That's, that's the short of it. New members, check out the forum and the Saturday members only presentation. Yes, do it. How do I donate? You got to be on a laptop or a desktop computer and you hit the little money sign and then you can pick a number. It's not, it hasn't been released to mobile yet, unfortunately. Well, I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately, but anytime it's harder, like, yep. Uh, let's see. I live in Eastern Washington and would love to buy fish from you. It's about a three hour trip for me. Yeah, that's definitely a trip, but it, it's worth a weekend trip one time, I think. I mean, I've driven down to Portland and back to buy fish a lot of times. And, uh, yeah, especially if you do double duty, like maybe you come over like next, uh, next month in June, we have Rob McClure speaking on Corydoras. So maybe you come over for the day, you buy fish from us if you want, and then you stay late enough, uh, to see that. Then you'd get home at like two or three o'clock in the morning, which I've done. I don't know if everybody can do that, but, uh, I definitely have done that myself where it's, it's a long day, but that way you get dual purpose. We need more nerms. That's if we do James, I, I want, I want a club army that, uh, I, I don't know what we're doing yet with it, but I mean, obviously we've got like perks and all that, but I mean, at a certain point there will be so many members that the membership can do something. And I don't know what that call is going to be yet. Like, is it, you know, we're all going to go, you know, rescue a, a beach or a river and pick up trash or whatever we're going to do. We're going to do something good though. Someday we'll do something. We'll make it happen. The little junior donating five. I like it. What's that? What's that kid? Is it Astro? No, is Astro the dog? Astro's a dog. What's the, that's, I, f I feel like that's the kid from the Jetsons. I don't know. How can I get fish to eat frozen food? Usually they take to it pretty easy. Uh, make sure it's fresh. Make sure it's appropriate for them. Like, don't try to feed, like, a sardine to, like, a tetra, right? Um, but, yeah, usually it shouldn't be too hard. I mean, there are some not-so-great frozen foods out there, especially if it's got a lot of veggie matter in it. That can be hard to get fish to eat, but... You know, try like some frozen blood worms. <laughs> My wife wants to start like a, a chihuahua rescue so bad. Not until like we, I got, I got to downscale what I'm doing so you can upscale what you're doing. Already we had a delivery while I was filming and the dogs were barking. I, I can imagine that times like 80. Just like nothing but like little yips and yaps. Elroy is the kid's name. That's right. That's right. Elroy Jetson. Got free ram's horn snail with some plants. Love them instead of hate them. Thanks to you. Interesting, I now have many different colors. Yeah, you can get, you know, kind of the pink ones, see-through ones, leopard ones, the brown ones. That, they're, I don't know, I like them. That's all I can say. Good evening, Ian, Ian, Ian Firewater. 
The fish is pretty big uh, for blood worms. I see. Um, you might want to do a garlic soak or something like that. Or if the fish is used to eating, like, let's say, freeze-dried krill, soak the frozen food with krill. And a lot of times that'll help them uh, adapt to it. This is one of those situations, again, where, like, the more info, the easier. So, like, on the forum or just in person, it's so much easier to go, oh, I have all the info. Here's the actual tip. Because that tip before didn't wasn't applicable to your case. Yeah, all for a puppy rescue. I don't know. Yeah, what, what, what it would be. We wouldn't necessarily be a rescue. We'd be like a... We'd be like the old dog haven or something. She just wants to, to adopt all the crustiest oldest little dogs that need a billion dollars in work and not necessarily find new homes for them. Just give them like, you know, oh, you're 15, you're going to live to be 17 and then break our hearts in half? Like, yeah, let's sign up for more of that. That's my wife. The more messed up and the more like down and out something is, the more she wants it. So, yeah. I want to live on a chihuahua farm. <laughs> Yeah, my wife is now screaming at me. It'll be a farm. <laughs> oh, man. This is why I used to have a different building for live streaming. I don't get screamed at about a chihuahua farm. <laughs> if I visit the store, it's no longer a trip. It's a journey to the other side of the world. I kind of feel that way. I'm kind of far away from my store now. I had to go down there to get a haircut. Any plans on uh, attending Aquashell in Chicago? Most likely. Most likely. Uh, I haven't bought tickets yet. And I'm, just, I'm ultra conservative with other people's money in that I don't want to be like, yeah, I'm going. I'm totally going. And then turns out, you know, I, I started up a chihuahua farm and I can't make it. You know, chihuahua farms around the corner when you least expect it. That's how it happens. Chihuahua hospice. Pretty much. That's essentially what she wants to run. <laughs> Mr. Ed, that's good. If that's how Dorkula picks things, and she picked Corey, what's that say? Well, it means I'm going to break your heart in about two years, and I'm old and crusty and full of problems and cost a lot of money. That's what that means. <laughs> ah, Arthur Tan says, it only likes worms and live feeders. Yeah, I would say you got to starve that fish. Don't feed him for at least a week. Offer some frozen, and then if it won't eat it, Wait another couple days, offer it again. Most fish, and I, again, I don't have all the info here, most fish can go several weeks without eating. You might be able to, like, once a week feed it, uh, you know, some live worms or something like that. And after a few weeks, it'll be so hungry, it'll probably start taking to frozen. Uh, let's see. Urban fish farm and puppy farm. Sounds like a dream come true. I, I would keep all the old crusty dogs till the end of time because I love old crusty dogs. I just, I don't like the amount of crying when you lose a pet like that. That's what I, it tears me up. Uh, how do you, do, wait, how do you do a live stream without having your hair trimmed? What do you mean? How do I? How do you, how you do a live stream without having your hair trimmed? I don't know. It was trimmed today. I feel like, that came out a little wrong. Like there's a meant to say something slightly different there. What time is it? Oof, we're, we're over two hours, I think. Let me do the math. Did we make it? Hold on. So 4,761 plus 227. Uh, nine. Are we literally like two short? Is that someone do that math? With not being in front of a thousand people, but I think that's too short. I think we're literally two subscribers short of 5,000. And hopefully, some more people will subscribe. So I don't like sit down to a meeting and like, you're at 498. Like, oh, or 4,498. Uh, I would be happy to see you at Dr. Our... <clears throat> Hold on, my voice. I'd be happy to see you at Aquashell Chicago. I missed you in 2019 due to my place being flooded. Oof. I miss getting the Murphy pin. Yeah, there's very few um, Murphy pins still, like, that aren't cherished. Like, my wife's got one or two of them. 
4,761, and we've gotten 227, make that 237 today. So I think that does it. Someone can uh, do the math. But John Skolik coming through right at the buzzer. Ooh, and Jay Bailey just joining up. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to brag, but the Murphy Pin's a centerpiece to my car's dashboard. The new swag, the new swag's coming out, uh, I think in a couple weeks. Might be while I'm in Germany, so I'll try to I'll try to let you guys know when it drops, because it's limited. Once it's gone, it's gone, and they're not coming back. So this is definitely going to be one of those, like, I'm so angry, I didn't get the thing. Like, yep, it's, it's kind of de by design. What are my thoughts on hybrids? I think they're kind of cool. Some are kind of lame, but some are pretty cool. 238. That does it. Wait. This thing says 238. Yeah, 238. We're literally one short. Oh, wait. Hold on. Mr. Ed just did it. Mr. Ed did it. Okay. Now we're there. Now we're there. His name was Mr. Red. My rainbows are apparently too dumb to figure out spawning mops. They avoid them no matter where I place them in the tank. Any tips? The trick is you have so many mops they can't help but be touching a mop. No, you might you might try different colors and different fabrics. I have run into I've seen people run into that before where um, like different greens or browns and shades basically do make a difference, which it seems like it probably shouldn't, but, uh, people have definitely noticed you got to try a bunch to see if the fish actually want to use them. So that's from, uh, Eric Bodrock was talking about that. And then I think Gary Lang also, so. Now I'm at 5,019. I don't know. I don't think that's true. There might be lag, though. But either way, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's an amazing... Uh, you know, hopefully, they'll just be like, wow, that's amazing. Here's another feature. Because the good news is, when we get a feature... Like, yeah, this one benefits me, but also benefits a lot of people that got free memberships, right? But there's other benefits that we get where you guys get to play with it and test it for a long time. And it's free, so... Sometimes it's great. Sometimes the feature is like, yeah, no one wants that. Like, trying to set up a Cardinia tank with chili rasboras in the tank, 6.6 .6 gallon, is it possible? Uh, yeah, it's possible. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's definitely doable. What liquid fruits do you recommend for growing plants immersed? I don't know. I don't really do any houseplants. Like, you even hear a lot of our houseplants we use Easy Green for. There is, like, Jimmy's channel. He could give you way better, uh, you know, way better advice because he's way more into houseplants than I am. But, yeah, I just use Easy Green because it, it works. <laughs> My wife just keeps screaming, say the numbers again. 243, 4,000. 761. I think she's just trolling me at this point. Corey got braces? I did, and they got adjusted today again. That way they'll keep uh, keep doing their thing while I'm in Europe. What's the best medicine to cure columnaris? I like the combo of Marison and Ikex at the same time. That's what I like. Yeah, everyone hit that. We need a like spike. We need... You know, we've had a thousand people in here for hours, and we're at six hundred ninety-seven likes. If you got a, if you got a free membership, hit that like button. If you're currently a member, hit that like button. If you're in the chat, hit that like button. If you're listening on the podcast right now in the future, log out of the podcast, get on YouTube, and hit that like button. If you're watching this in uh, five years from today, let me know and hit that like button. Just so I'll see that comment. And be like, oh my gosh, it worked. 
this five hour long con or five year long con worked. <laughs> what is ick? Ick is, uh, it's a shorter term for a parasite that's much longer. I don't remember the full way to pronounce ick, but it's a little parasite that looks like salt that lives on the fish that just feeds off the fish. And over time, it can kind of overwhelm the fish. And so you use a medicine to usually uh, kill that off kind of slow and steady. Just got some snails today. What do I need to do to get them other than what's in the tank? Uh, long term, you might want a food that's got a little bit of calcium in it, whether it's like crab bites or a shrimp food, um, plankton banquet blocks, that kind of stuff. Just They need some uh, some calcium in their diet. Are there any other creators on YouTube that have over 5,000 members? Yeah, there's big gamers, you know, like, uh, Dr. Disrespect and, you know, probably, uh, Ludwig and stuff. He probably has like 20,000 or something. Who knows? Like a lot, but I don't think many people are beating us, uh, that aren't gamers. We might be in the lead. I, I don't know. I'm always listening real intently to be like, because they can't tell me numbers, but they can elude to things. Like, you're doing really well. You might be the best one in this category. Are you sending up puppies? Come here, Tiki. 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 Don't show your butt. Come on. Come on. Oh, even Wince is up here. Come on. Come here. You're just running away. Come here. Any treats? The last time she squeaked on camera. I'm not modding, Steve. Got a mod. Oh, I got a mod. These are the real mods right here. We put them to work. They fight people with their hair they shed. I think you fight with the teeth. Do you like being in the big lights? Wince is allergic. Yeah. Apparently. This is Tinky, by the way. What are you doing back there, baby? Come here. You want up? You're going to run away, aren't you? I'm right here. Oh, come at you. Oh, come at you. This is Wincy, who has the other emoji. Oh, come on. You'll be okay. Scary computer. You gotta give her kisses. Your heart is pounding. Oh, are you okay with that? Just gonna lay there, your tongue out. Yeah. Tinky looks like a corgi that got shrunk into a chihuahua. I want a corgi. I've never had one, but they are cute. You're not really the show dog tonight. Tinky's cleaning for you. Yeah. Oh, stab me in the throat. Oh. Are you never coming up here again? Oh, you're scared. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come here. Come on, let's go. All right. Go. Where am I at? Let's yeah. Let's see more content with Tinky. That's all my wife does. It's like, how are you going to fit the dogs in this video every day? That's what she asks me every day. Every day. Let's go. Go on. Trolling me. You're gonna have to come on camera to get them. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you don't get paid at all to be the actor. Not on camera yet. You don't know. They're not gonna come. Ooh, you breed corgis, so when you're ready, I will deliver all the way from Louisiana. We kind of, I kind of want to do this crazy road trip. He's literally on the other side of the thing now. I kind of want to do a crazy road trip where 
I want to spend some more time because I bought that camper van, right? There she goes. Uh, and do some day trips with the dogs and, and the wife, obviously. And uh, get them used to, yeah, we drive for four hours and you get out and go potty. We have lunch. And I would love to like go all the way to Louisiana, pick up a Corgi or something like that and drive all the way back. So we get like a super cool road trip, you know, the girls, as I call them, get to experience lots of different states they've never been to. And then we get to bring home uh, a Corgi or, 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 you know, a long hair chihuahua or something else. Like there's, you know, I could fall in love with anything. Oh, that's right. See, this is, I hate this. So I hate that uh, uh, while being live, you gloss over the fact like, wait, the Aquatic Morning Show, like, wait a second. Yeah, you've been asking me to get on the live stream. I did meet your corgis at the thing. So please allow my apology of like, I, I feel like I unintentionally kind of snub people just cause out of like busy and just like my life is chaos. Uh, that's also why I'm getting in a day early and leaving a day late at the next Aquashella. Cause I didn't get enough time to hang out with, uh, like other people behind the scenes of the creators and all that stuff. And we did the member meetup and I didn't get to go to the creator thing. And so I don't want this like weird, uh, thing to form of like that guy never hangs out with us. Like mostly I just got people pulling in a million different directions. So unintentional by far. I think is your name, Jesse? feel like oh I, I don't even know if i should have said that so my apologies if that wasn't knowledge but i'm also not right if i'm right you can say it and then i won't feel bad if uh, it's not then i didn't i didn't spill the beans all right oh i don't have slow mode hmm. i was like how did someone spam because i have slow mode that's how what do I think the best tank size is for setting up? I love your video from a few years ago that was giving a presentation on opening. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like 29-gallon tanks. I think that's kind of the minimum that most people should really start with in the hobby. But, you know, most times they're like, well, 5 gallon seems huge. And I'm like, yeah, but for like 50 bucks more, you have a 29-gallon. And you'll use that forever. Do I have Discord? Uh, I mean, I have it up on my computer right at the moment, and there technically is an Aquarium Co-op Discord that nobody's been invited to. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I haven't, well, here's the thing. I don't want to live in Discord all day long. So that's, that's really the reason. Like, I need to be able to, I don't want to have to pay moderators to be there. I don't want it to turn into like, oh, everybody's just hawking my competitors and like, oh no, and you know, like trolls and all that. So it's like, well... Uh, I don't know yet. How can I get a membership? Uh, they're given out when, when people donate them. So people donate them. Uh, they're given out based on uh, how much you interact with the channel. So talking in chat, watching videos, hitting the like button. Maybe I should make that a thing because it's a true statement. By hitting the like button, you literally increase your odds of getting a free membership. That is a 100% true statement. And when you leave comments and you do all the things. So, yeah. Ah, I meant a tank size for setting up for breeding systems. I see. Peko has 40 breeders on sale and everything up to 75 gallons. I want to build a system in my basement. My honest advice would be 20 gallons, mostly using lots and lots of 20 gallons. If you look at Dean's setup, he uses lots of 10s and 20s. And he's got some 40s for, like, growing fish out. But... Uh, you know, really you can split spawns into two. So like two twenties is kind of like one forty, except you could have two different breeding pairs or you could raise up a whole spawn split between two. Uh, in general, you want more contain. Oh, sorry. Containers that hold water. Not so much bigger containers. All right. I'm cutting this, cutting this off fairly soon. Maybe it, maybe in six more minutes. Joel G was getting the worst haircut of his life. Awesome. Good thing it grows back.
Uh, will we ever be able to watch Murphy via mobile? Yeah, that's uh, the technology's changed over time, and uh, I think the problem is it's not so much mobile. Let me see if I could do it. I think it's the browser. Let me see if I can watch it. I think it's just you can't use Safari. Let me see if I go to gramcoop.com. And try to look at the Murphy. I spelled my own thing wrong. Come on. Scroll to the bottom. Look for Murphy Cam. Where'd it go? Oh, I got it. It's under links, maybe? There we go. Live Puffer Cam. Scroll down. Yeah, it works for me. Like, I've got it. It's playing right there. So I think it's just... I think it's Safari that won't do it. Let me see if I make it a little bigger there. Yep, I made it even bigger, so that works. And then, yeah, it's full screen even. So, even though it's an iPhone, I think it's just it can't work in in, uh, in Safari. So, but yes, where I was going with that is we still plan to put on the new 1450 gallon tank for Murphy, uh, we're going to put a better camera and a better way to access it. Well, at least try to. I can't guarantee it'll work, but yeah. Dean snuck in at the end. That's right. Dean always shows up for dessert. Let me tell you. He's all about that dessert. I mean, that's not true, but... <laughs> See? EYP's critters. Dean wants dessert. That's... Eh? If you watch his Instagram, you get some pretty good meals. Yeah, I'm always jealous how he finds these places to get all this good food. My new GSP thinks Murphy is a god. <laughs> yeah, probably he probably thinks it's a predator. I got I got three minutes. I got to knuckle down here. I was watching one of your t old twenty gallon suggestion stocking guides, and it suggested two to three bamboo shrimp. Do you think you'll st still think that's a good idea? Yeah, as long as you're feeding a nice fine powdered food, whether it's a uh, powder apache or first bites make sure that water column is real full of kind of powdery foods yeah works out decent when you start shipping to canada will you be shipping ickx and other meds uh most likely not because they you can't so that's that's gonna be the next thing it's people are gonna be like oh yeah he's doing it how dare you not ship all the things so unfair Arr. and i'll be like yeah i don't make international laws like it just i can't uh, that being said, it should be like, uh, you know, air pumps and, and that kind of stuff. Or not air pumps, uh, like sponge filters. Basically anything non-mechanical, non-medicine. That bird's like right out the window there. Uh, non-medicine, non-plant. I think f most foods will be okay, but we got a little bit of investigating to do there. So we'll do as much as we can. That's, I mean, it's in our best interest to sell you stuff. So, like, it's not from, like, we sure do hate taking people's money. It's more like, oh, legally we can't take your money for that. Uh, when we get more banana plants, they're out of season, so it's probably, like, I don't know, probably, like, another four months, something like that. They're, they're a seasonal plant, though, unfortunately. Any advice on intake sponges from Amazon? My advice would be buy ours. But my real advice would be like, you're going to struggle to find a coarse one. And so that can damage your pump. If you can find a coarse one, make sure it's closed up on both ends. But I don't, I don't have a, like a good recommendation because we make our own and I like them. And I made them to my specification. Um, so I haven't been like testing any of them or anything. So there might be some great ones on there, but most often I find faults and like, Oh, they're open on both ends or the porosity is incorrect or the whole size is wrong. Or I guess I see that in the pictures. And also I will see people like messages like, Hey, this thing's not working very good. And then they're like, yeah, I bought this one that wasn't for you guys. Like, Oh yeah. You mean the one that we, we fixed all that stuff with? Yeah. You didn't buy that one, huh? Oh, you saved a dollar 16. Hmm. All right. Yeah, but for the most part, you can kind of like stretch them if the hole's got to get bigger. 
if you need to make the hole smaller, you can cut some pieces off. Then it looks a little weird, but stuff it in there so it'll hold it. You can make do, but my thing is like, we literally manufacture, I, I think this might be a true, well, some, some hang on backs come with some, but outside of that, I think we're the only people that actually manufacture and change them uh, to the specifications we wanted. Everything else was like, oh yeah, this could work on a pond, you know, pump. And then like, oh, it could also fit this thing. Like ours were literally made to do what we wanted to do. All right, day 15, I got to go. I'll be on here all night, and I got work I got to get done. I got other things to do. In fact, I charged up the iPad. I got to do some testing on the website with the iPad because there's been some reports of possibly a bug, and so I got to try and find that bug. So, uh, yeah, I got I got things piling up that guys got to do. So, uh, 5,000, boom. Now, when I'm walking around, uh, you know, inner zoo doing the walk, like, <laughs> and then someone says, oh, Corey, I'd like to work with you. And then I just go, 5,000 members. And then they go, ah, uh, what? No, but in case I actually get to some real talks, I'll be like, yeah, we should do a giveaway for my members. I got 5,000. I must do this. So we'll see if I can hoodwink anyone into giving free stuff to our people. That's always my MO. So thanks for hanging out. I will see you next time. It might be a few weeks before I'm back in the hot seat. Videos will still come out. Realize they're a little like, hey, I get it, top five -y type of stuff, but you're traveling right now. You had to pre-make a bunch of videos. And uh, yeah, we'll see you when I get back. Hopefully everything's still good. And uh, we'll have new and exciting things to talk about from Europe, whether it's new technology whether it's uh, new low-tech, new plants, maybe it's new long fin celestial pearl danios. Who knows what kind of trouble I'm going to find. Don't. That's why I go. So we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you to all the members. Thanks to everyone who donated. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Here we go. Chihuahua Farm.